adequate notice of this meeting was provided and published in the Asbury Park Press and the Ocean Star on January 5, 2018. Copies of the agenda were provided to the newspaper, posted on public bulletin boards in the township website. At this time, everybody please silence or turn off your cell phones, please. Roll call. Councilwoman Zapsik. Here. Councilman Halloran. Here. Vice President Crate. Here. Councilman Mumolo. Here. Councilman Fosman. Here. Councilwoman Pontarero. Here. President DeYoung. Here. Thank you. Everybody please rise for the salute to the flag and I'm followed by a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, please accept and file the reports. I will, thank you. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the April 24th meeting, please? Motion. Second. So, motion by Councilman Halloran, second by Councilman Mumolo. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Zabsik. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. For our first presentation of this evening will be for Pamela Cooper, Teacher of the Year, Mayor and Vice President Crate. Please join us down off the dais. I want to thank Ms. Cooper for coming out this evening. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our, our district teacher of the year. Uh, Pamela Cooper has been a member of the Lake Riviera Middle School staff since 2013. She is a dedicated educator who is renowned for her cutting edge consumer science program. Her program combines the science of cooking with the biology of baking to give students real world examples of important concepts like food science and food safety. She's been named the 2017-2018 Teacher of the Year for not only Lake Riviera Middle School, but also for Brick Township School District. As a teacher leader, Ms. Cooper is regarded for her curricular and instructional expertise. <coughs> she has provided professional development sessions on the implementation of the National Family and Consumer Science Standards for her colleagues inside and outside the school district. She's also helped her colleagues design performance-based tasks that incorporate cooperative group structures within their programs. Ms. Cooper is extremely dedicated to teaching the whole child, promoting the health and well-being of the students in her charge, and supporting the community. She has invited guest speakers from local restaurants and food service provider, providers from colleges to establish a community connection and to foster career awareness. Ms. Cooper's greatest contribution to the community comes as a volunteer advisor for Lead and Seed, the district's anti-drug youth prevention coalition. She works in partnership with DARE officers from the Brick Police Department to protect students from the dangers of substance abuse. Ms. Cooper is a passionate professional who is highly respected by all the members of the school community, and she's truly the best representative of what public ed education has to offer. And I have to say, um, as a fellow middle school teacher, um, middle school is not the easiest group to work with. You have uh, students coming in that are very young, and by the time they leave, they're, uh, I would say, acting like they're in their 20s. So um, it's a great um, privilege to be standing here with someone who is able to reach her students and have them really respond in a positive way to her program. So we're really excited to present this proclamation. So um, therefore, be resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, and State of New Jersey. Uh, we join Mayor John G. Ducey in saluting Pamela Cooper for being named the Brick Township Teacher of the Year, and we urge all residents to thank Ms. Cooper and all Brick Township school teachers for all that they do for the students and families in our community. So thank you so much.
privilege and honor of having our school superintendent, Dennis Philippone, here in the audience. If Mr. Philippone, would you like to come up? And yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Philippone has done an excellent job, and I know uh, as superintendent, his last day is coming up on June 30th, yes, and I want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all the hard work that you put in for our school district, and uh, really stepping in and uh, doing an excellent job. You've been in you know, brick your whole life, you know, being a teacher and then the principal and now moving up to administration all the way up there to superintendent. You've done an excellent job. <laughs> now, also an honor for which, because you have Ms. Cooper here today. The township of Brick is fortunate to have many outstanding individuals who are dedicated to the edu education of our young residents. Pamela Cooper, a teacher of family and consumer science at Lake Riviera Middle School, <coughs> has been honored as Brick Township's 2018 Teacher of the Year. Ms. Cooper received her Bachelor of Science degree in Hotel and Restaurant Management from the University of Massachusetts in 2004 and her Teaching Certificate in Family and Consumer Science from the College of New Jersey in 2007. Sorry, I have allergies. <laughs> Last summer, Ms. Cooper was one of only 30 teachers selected nationwide to attend the FDA's Food Science Institute, which resulted in her changing her curriculum to meet the new national family and consumer science standards and the New Jersey student learning standards for 21st century life and careers. In addition to Ms. Cooper's dedication in the classroom, she also promotes the health and well-being of her students by establishing a community connection and to help foster career awareness. Ms. Cooper is highly regarded for her instructional expertise and has provided professional development sessions on the implementation of the national family and consumer science standards for her colleagues. In addition to her teaching, Ms. Cooper shows her support for the community through her volunteer efforts on such committees as Lead and Seed, Lake Riviera Middle School Relay for Life Team, and the Lake Riviera Middle School Character Education Committee, among other things. She is a highly passionate educator who utilizes her talent and vision to positively impact her students. And we are extremely fortunate to have her in one of our classrooms here in Brick Township. For all of these reasons, I, John G. Ducey, the mayor of the Township of Brick in the County of Ocean in the state of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim tomorrow, Wednesday, June 13th, 2018, to be Pamela Cooper Day. Next up, we have uh, Tick Awareness Month, and I'd like to call up Noreen Barris from the Ocean County Master Gardeners. Mayor? <coughs> Master Gardeners of Ocean County was formed in 1990 and is a nonprofit organization working in cooperation with the Ocean County Board of Freeholders and the Rutgers, New Jersey Agricultural Experiment Station to promote the mission of the Rutgers Master Gardener Volunteer Program by utilizing research-based information to educate the public on best practices in consumer horticulture and <coughs> environmental stewardship. The Master Gardeners of Ocean County under the direction of the Rutgers Master Gardener Program provides services for tick identification and have tracked the tick population in Ocean County since 2010, noting an increase over the past five years. While Lyme disease cases are reported in Ocean County and New Jersey, the federal government has updated its pamphlet, Tick-Borne Diseases of the United States, a reference manual for healthcare providers, to include additional less known diseases that impact the health of our residents, including anaplasmosis, Babiosis, babesiosis, uh, ehrlichiosis, 
Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, <laughs> got that one, and Powassan Virus. The Master Gardeners of Ocean County are committed to providing tick identification and preventive information, as well as raising awareness of diseases indicated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For all of these reasons, I, John G. Ducey, the Mayor of Township of Brick, and the County of Ocean in the state of New Jersey do hereby proclaim June 2018 to be Tick Awareness Month here in Brick Township, and we'd love to hear from you. to tell you a little bit about the one uh, volunteer service we perform that we've been very proud of lately, especially with all the headlines in the newspapers. Our organization last year identified ticks for 1,674 residents throughout Ocean County. Each resident was educated in what type of tick it was. There are several. There's the deer, the dog, or the lone star, male, female, are they a larvae, or are they a uh, nymph? Now, the potential disease each type can carry, and whether it's engorged, whether it fed on you. So if you bring a tick to our tick lab, they will give you all this information. Last year, 3,693 ticks were identified in our tick lab. I'm sure with all the newspaper headlines, we're going to pass that this year. The volunteers also conduct seminars throughout Ocean County to, ident to educate the residents on how to deal with this increased population of the ticks. The Brick Times ran a lovely article on a fellow master gardener who gave a talk in Manchester and told you how to avoid the ticks and what to look for, what to wear when you're walking. Uh, free tick identification, this is free. It's available throughout the entire year at the Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Ocean County. We're at 1623 Whitesville Road in Toms River. We encourage our residents to bring in any tick they come across to be ID'd. This could relieve your mind if you find a tick on you and want to know, do I panic? Because it could be a dog tick and they don't sometimes carry too many diseases. This also helps the county keep track of the growing tick population and the diseases they carry. We thank the Ocean County Board of Chosen Freeholders for their support in allowing, in, in allowing us to provide this important service to our residents, and I thank the council for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to bring up Trish Tataro, our recycling coordinator, or I, I should call you our upcycling coordinator for this presentation, along with um, the Hackensack Meridian Ocean Medical Center staff that we have. So please all come on up. Good evening. I wanted to take this opportunity to recognize Hackensack Meridian Ocean Medical Center for their continued partnership with the township through education, sustainability, upcycling, education within the facility and within their staff. This year, Hackensack Meridian has partnered with us to sponsor an expo, an educational recycling expo for the employees and also they allowed our students of the Brick Township school system to present all of their upcycled projects where they took items that would either be in the garbage or no longer have a use value and create something that would be used in a different way. So it turns out that since we've partnered with Hackensack Meridian Ocean in 2016 with regards to recycling, they began with recycling 11 and 11.5% of all waste went into the recycling. 2017, it was increased to 16.6%, and in 2018, it's projected to recycle 22.6% of all waste from the hospital as recyclable. The goal is to have 30% recycling rate by the end of 2018. Not only did they provide education for our students with uh, sustainability, they also partnered with a uh, beach cleanup, and they have also partnered in the Green Fair. 
So I thought it was important, or we as a township thought it was important to recognize all of those involved in, in the uh, sustainability educational process. So we like to present everyone with a certificate of appreciation and acknowledge their continued partnership with Brick Township for recycling, sustainability, and education. Like Trish said, we do have certificates, and they say, um, in recognition and appreciation of your support for the Township of Brick's efforts to become more sustainable and environmentally responsible, of environmentally responsible community through education, raising awareness, and taking action. And we have them for Dean Lynn, Regional President, Vito Busolato, Chief Operating Officer, Mike Masia. Manager, Environmental Services. Karen Cavanaugh, Manager, Volunteer Services. Dawn Battaglia, Manager, Materials Management. Sue Weiss, R Risk Manager. Alicia Decker, Imaging Services, Biz er, Imaging Services Business Manager. Nancy Kerr, Manager, Infection Control. Mike Silverstein, Manager, Food and Nutrition. Walter Wincoop, MD. Ken Suchek, Senior Manager Operations. So once again, we thank you on behalf of the Mayor and Council for doing all you can for Brick Township. Moving on to the consent agenda, Madam Clerk. All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. If discussion is desired on any item, this item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Very good, thank you. Resolution 4-1, recognize District Teacher of the Year, Pamela Cooper. This resolution recognizes Pamela Cooper, a consumer science teacher at Lake Riviera Middle School, as Brick Township's Teacher of the Year. Resolution 4-2, authorize acceptance of emergency management performance grant. This resolution accepts a grant award in the amount of $10,000 from the New Jersey State Police Officer of Emer Office of Emergency Management, which is used to offset the salary of the Township's Emergency Management Coordinator. Resolution 4-3, Authorize request of extension airport tract 2016 NJ DOT grant. This resolution authorizes the township request for an extension of the NJ DOT municipal aid bikeways program grant. The extension is being requested to give township staff more time to coordinate the acquisition of easements from the Ocean County Utility Authority in order to construct the bikeway complete the design plans and award contract for construction. Resolution 4-4, authorize receipt of bids, service, and repairs to fuel dispensary system. This resolution authorizes the receipt of bids for service and repairs to the township's fuel dispensary system, which is approximately 20 years old. This will be a time and materials bid that will include service and repairs as well as service calls to ensure compliance with NJDEP's one and three year testing requirements. 
Resolution 4-5, authorize receipt of bids, roadway improvements to Heritage Hill. Mayor? This resolution authorizes the receipt of bids for roadway improvements to Heritage Hill uh, and the roads that are included, which is more important than the neighborhood. Uh, Mary Mac Way, Liberty Lane, Revere Drive, and Revolutionary Road. Thank you. Very good. Resolution 4-6, authorize receipt of bids, roadway improvements to Laurel Crest. Mayor? This resolution, again, it's Laurel Crest, you know, it's the neighborhood, authorizes the receipt of bid for roadway improvements, uh, including Poplar Way, Center Drive, and Folsom Drive. <clears throat> Thank you. Resolution 4-7, authorize receipt of proposal, legal services pool. This resolution authorizes the receipt of proposals for legal services pool in order to ex expand the current pool to ensure div a diverse representation from which to use as needed. Resolution 4-8, authorize award of bid, Bernard J. Cook Park Improvements. Mayor? Thank you. Um, yes, this uh, resolution awards a bid to uh, precise construction uh, they're in Freehold, New Jersey, uh, in the amount of one million six hundred thirteen thousand six hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Uh, it's for the improvements to Bernie Cook Park, or formerly, I guess, it's known as Bernard J. Cook Park. Um, everybody calls it Bernie Cook. It's uh, just so you know where it is. It's behind the Wawa at the uh, new Parkway exit. Um, located at uh, the end of uh, Burn Tavern Road, basically the rent end of it, right behind the Wawa. Um, and the scope of the work generally consists of the construction of parking lot improvements, a concrete skate park, basketball courts, age-specific playgrounds, a multi-purpose softball field, a concrete trike path, which is a, um, a basically a place we're going to be able to bring toddlers to to teach them how to... Um, ride their bikes and know what street signs are and which side of the street to be on, a concrete patio areas, HMA walkways, lighting and electrical improvements, um, irrigation system and associated well and other site improvements to the existing park area. Four bids were submitted but for this project and precise construction was the lowest responsive, responsible bidder and being the low bidder and being also responsible, uh, they are the one who are being awarded. Um, and the, um, the bids range from the awarded precise construction of 1613000 all the way up to uh, you know, a different one who was not picked of 2117000 Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 4-9, authorize award of bid replacement of HVAC units at Civic Plaza. This resolution awards a bid for the replacement of HVAC units at Civic Plaza to WHL Enterprises, trading as Bill Leary Air Conditioning and Heating Metuchen, at a not to exceed amount of $75,000 per year. Twelve bidders picked up their, the packages and one bid was received, that being WHL Enterprises. This will be a two-year contact that will commence on June 13th 2018 and end June 12, 2020. Resolution 410, authorize award of rebid general athletic equipment and supplies. This resolution authorizes the award of rebid for general athletic supplies to three vendors, AD Star, Pittsburgh, PA, BSN Sports, Jenkintown, PA, and Metuchen Center, Sayreville. Bid notices were mailed to 20 prospective bidders from our bidders list, of which six picked up bid packages. Three bids were received. The bid specification for the catalog discounts contains various types of items whereby not all items are available through one bidder. Therefore, it is the recommendation of the recreation director to award this category to all three bidders. Resolution 411, authorize award of contract, electric supply services. This resolution authorizes award of contract for electric supply services to Aggressive Energy LLC, an online auction for the purchase of bulk electricity 
was held on May 22nd and administered by Concord Energy, the township's energy consultant for our utility accounts and the solar array at the landfill. The auction was held specifically for our electricity accounts and streetlights and was an important first step in the process of identifying how to best optimize the solar re revenue at the landfill. The pricing received at the auction was favorable and the township is projected to save over $215,000 over the two year term. The savings is a direct comparison to the effective utility rate in place on June 1st, 2018. This is a 16% decrease from the previous cost for bulk electricity. Resolution 412, authorize award of contract purchasing and delivering of office supplies through Stafford Township Cooperative Pricing System. This resolution authorizes an award of contract for the purchase and delivery of office supplies to W.B. Mason, Brockton, Massachusetts. As part of the Stafford Township Cooperative Pricing System, this is an open-ended contract with funds being encumbered contingent upon the availability of funds in the budget year not to exceed $35,000 per year. This is a two-year contract. Resolution 413, award, authorize award of proposal, alternate and conflict code enforcement prosecutor. This resolution authorizes an award of proposal for alternate and conflict for, uh, code enforcement prosecutor to Eric M. Bernstein and Associates and Grace Mamaro and Associates at a rate of $400 mm -hmm. per hour for alternate code enforcement prosecutor and $250 for conflict code enforcement prosecutor. Resolution 414, authorize award of bid CDBG Rehabilitation Program Project 17-1. This resolution authorizes award of bid to Newman Construction South Amboy in the amount of $22,600 for a project funded through the Community Development Block Grant Program. Resolution 415, authorize 2018-2019 liquor license renewals without restrictions, consumption, distribution, and club licenses. This resolution renews retail consumption licenses without restrictions to PJ Sweeney's, Windward Grill, Arrowhead Inn, Villa Vittoria, River Rock, Beacon 70, Spirit Unlimited, and TGI. TGI Fridays. Distribution licenses without restrictions to Forbes Liquors, Lenape Byright Liquors, Brick Town Liquors, Wine Shop, NJ Wine Gallery, Brick Liquors, Byright of Brick, Wine World, and Joe Canal's Discount Liquor Outlet. And club liquor licenses without restrictions to American Legion Post 348, Knights of Columbus, Brick Elks, Matita Conk River Yacht Club, Riviera Beach Boat Club, Shore Acres Yacht Club, and VFW Post 88667. Resolution 416, authorize 2018-2019 retail consumption liquor license renewals with restrictions. Applebee's, Bonefish Grill, Jack and Mike Bar and Grill, Buffalo Wild Wings, Carrabba's Italian Grill, Houlihan's, Mantelokin Road Ale House, Outback Steakhouse, Quaker Steak and Lube, Red Robin, Tuscany, Urban Coal House, Eustbees, and Rosalita's Tray. Resolution 417, authorize placement of tax liens for property cleanups. This resolution authorizes the placement of tax liens for property cleanup at 735 Herbertsville Road in the amount of $163.59. Resolution Force 18, authorize special event permit GCM Family Fun Day. This resolution authorizes special event permit for a family fun day at Green Cove Marina from 1 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, June 23rd at the marina located on Division Street. 
Resolution 419, authorize special events permit festival at Living Faith. This resolution authorizes a special events permit for a festival at Living Faith Bible Church on Route 88. This festival, the festival will be held from 11.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on July 22nd. Resolution 420, authorize special events permit, Berry Fresh Farms. This resolution authorizes a special events permit for Scary Rotten Farms at Berry Fresh Farms on Brick Boulevard from dusk to 11 p.m. during the months of September and October, as well as December 7th, 8th, 14th, and 15th. Resolution 421, authorize special events permit PBA fundraiser. This resolution authorizes a special events permit for a Brick PBA Fallen Heroes fundraiser at Beacon 70, Route 70. The event will be held from 1 to 9 p.m. Friday, June 29th, with a rain date of July 13th. Resolution 422, bond releases and reductions. Madam Clerk. Thank you. 422A is an inspection fund release for Darrell Porter on Mandaloking Road in the amount of $237.67. 422B is an inspection fund release for Coast Termite on Brook Boulevard in the amount of $90.58. 422C is an inspection fund release for Millrick Construction Corp on Chambersbridge Road in the amount of $1,109.92. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Resolution 423, Tax Collector. Mrs. Bergen. Thank you. 23A, 100% DAV refund and cancel taxes for Block 1244, Lot 138, in the amount of $1,708.57. 23B, 100% DAV refund and cancel taxes for Block 1340.17, Lot 48, in the amount of $673.16. 23C, tax overpayments for the year 2018. There is one in the amount of $219.77. And 23D is a retention of tax sale certificates for Block 855, Lot 39, and Block 808, Lot 1. Thank you. That is the end of the consent agenda. Anything from Council? Yes, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. I just, I'm um, Bernie Cook Park. I'm glad we have another park going in. It's a great thing. And I, and I think that the families get out of their houses. The kids are really uh, playing hard out there. We've got a skateboard park going in. I think the parks are fantastic. I'm glad it's open from dawn to dusk, and that's the way it should be. Thank you. Anybody else? Call for a motion and a second, please. Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Zapsik. Second by Councilwoman Ponterero. Open to the public for questions on the consent agenda. Sam Foster, Chief of Drive at Brick. Uh, I have a comment about uh, Resolution 416. Uh, I uh, want to express my concerns for granting a renewing the liquor license for uh, one of the restaurants listed because uh, I've brought this to the attention of uh, people before Ocean County Freeholders free in meeting and also during a Brick Township meeting. That is that uh, one of the restaurants here uh, allows smoking in the restaurant, and I've complained about this in the past. And my point is that uh, I don't feel that because they've been uh, allowing, they've been in violation of the New Jersey Clean Air Act for several years now. They, I was in there this afternoon, and it went from one person smoking to like three or four, and there's like a cloud of smoke at the bar. I uh, brought this to the attention to freeholders also, and they said to complain to the health department, but bring it to the attention of the township because you are uh, in charge of the liquor licenses for the, the, the restaurant. And in the past, what happened was that uh, when I complained to one of the managers, well, to the bartender, they got a manager. Manager told me, well, they have permission from the Township of Brick Health Department to allow smoking. And I told them there was no such thing. And I checked with the county freeholders, and, and they had a health department official. There. So they didn't lie to me. So I wanted to express my concerns about this because I don't feel that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you need to wait, if the township needs to actually wait until a complaint is filed and with the health department or what. I'm just bring this to your attention because it's uh, the New Jer state of New Jersey is uh, 
uh, clamping down on smoking in public, like at beaches. I think they're being, I don't know if it's been banned yet or not, but it's uh, being proposed by the legislature and Governor Murphy. So I just want to bring this to your attention because uh, that I eat out a lot because I can't cook very well. And I just, uh, uh, this is the only restaurant that I've been in or bar where they uh, have this kind of a, a problem. It's been going on for several years now. I just want to bring this to your attention. I don't know if this will affect or uh, preclude a restaurant from getting a liquor license or not, if there'll be grounds for doing it. I just wanted to bring it to your attention because, uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, one of those situations where the state has a policy and it's the law is being, it's not just a policy, it's a law. And uh, what good does it do to uh, pass additional laws tightening smoking when, you know, you can go into a bar and they allow the e-cigarette use and then sometimes they actually allow cigarette usage. So thank you. Oh, it's uh, Jack and Mike's Bar and Grill. It's on Cedar Bridge. I heard that they just had new ownership. I don't know or not if they did, did they change owners or not. But uh, like I said, I, I was in there this afternoon, and I ended up walking out because they had there was like a clouds of smoke rising from the bar. And, yeah, well, I was there today this afternoon, and it's nothing unusual. That's why I stopped eating in there. But I went there today because I was hungry, and I could get a spot at uh, my usual place where I go, which is uh, PJ Sweeney's. But uh, I get today it was like two or three, and it's a cloud of smoke. It's it's at the bar because, like I said, I just brought this to attention before, and I complained years ago when I was eating in there at the bar and uh, complained to the bartender, and she got the manager, and the manager said to me, you know, we have permission from the township of Brick, and I told him this is a state law. Even if there, even if Brick did give you a permission, you know, it's you can't, you know, the jurisdiction state has a jurisdiction over. The, the, the township of Brick, and like I said, it brought this to the attention of the county freeholders, and they told me to complain to the health department. Did, you, just make a, did you make a complaint? And hit this? Yeah, I did, but I haven't heard anything about fr back from it. I heard I was in there after the, after I made my complaint. It stopped for a while, but then they started up with the smoking again, and I figured, well, you know, uh, I don't know what's going on here. If they, I don't know if they're fined or spoken to or what, but I, uh, I. Uh, I don't know what the situation is now, but you know, like I, they, I heard that they have new ownership there, so that's why I just uh, was there this afternoon. I saw the smoke, and I said, "No use going to a manager and complaining." And, and so I just uh, walked out, went somewhere else. That's all. But you know, I don't know if this something I just would preclude them from getting a liquor license if it's grounds for it or not. But I just want to bring it to your attention. Thank you. Because, you know, like I said, the state is cracking down on smoking, and you know, if the law is going to be ignored now with this issue, you know, then uh, what's the use of having any laws at all? You know. But yeah, no, we, don't, thank you. we don't want to make up frivolous laws that uh, no one's going to enforce. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to complain to the health department again, but, you know, I had the same problem at casinos, Borgata. No, that was a different situation because they allow smoking there in some sections, but, you know, rich men plump down like $5,000 cash and have no smoking table. So I debated smoking. I can understand that, you know what yeah. I mean? That, I mean, I'm big game like $100, you know, so. But this is a situ different situation. I just want to bring it to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, obviously we didn't get permission, but we'll report it to the health department as well. Thanks. Thanks for telling us. Yes. That's rather disrespectful not to call me by name. Okay. And with that said, at least one councilman knows I'm in a rage tonight, and I would want caution you all that if you do anything to raise my blood pressure more than it already is and I should pass out, it's on all of you. And some of it goes back to what happened on my way here tonight that would be on all of you also had I killed a young man. Um, I have several questions, but I'm going to do my comments first. This says it is a caucus public meeting. Some of these things are perfectly acceptable on a consent agenda. Many of them belong at a caucus meeting and without a clock ticking on what is set. You people do not have enough input to make some of the decisions. Mr. Forster had a very valid comment to make. Had you had a caucus meeting, you may have reconsidered what you were putting in the consent agenda and what you were going to discuss separately. Uh, if you do the consent after a caucus, where we all get, oh, am I upsetting somebody up there? I hear the heavy breathing, or are you just so enamored with my beauty? Well, you didn't hear it. 
and your ears are older than mine, evidently, because I heard it. And I don't have keen hearing this, these days. So let's not have any more. Um, the caucus meeting is meant to do it. The law is smoking would be allowed, but in an enclosed area set off from the rest of the general public that frequents it. And it's not just for this state. I remember in Colorado having to, having people having, that wanted to smoke, having to go to a certain area. I don't know if I hop has it, that was one place in Colorado. And you can't give them permission, as they claimed, to, to have smoking. It has to be set off from the others. And that should have been done a long time ago, and not allowed, and there should be a vehicle for Mr. Forster or somebody else who may have even more acute health problems to contact someone right away. There's a lot on here that I have comments about, but since I'm going to start doing a version of what Mr. Suka does, I am, have been setting up a website. You've heard of GoDaddy, Go Central, you can do it in one day. Well, you cannot do it in one way, and it has day, and it has cost me money and hours. But I have actually published it. You will be a allowed to view it. But it is basically five blogs, starting with Nan's uh, local Irish pub for anything and everything. But then there's one for Brick and Ocean County, one for the state, and one for the federal government. Matters that I find and research and work on. So you will be able to comment on a Facebook when I post it there and tell you, go look at the, the web page and what it, how you access it. Now, um, you do not give us enough information. As E.T. said, or was it? No, Short Circuit said it. More input. More input, please. Uh, Heritage Hill in Laurel Crest. I believe the statement was it's a neighborhood. Is it governed by a homeowner association? How did I know of? Okay, so it's just the name of the neighborhood, and they're all town streets you're talking about. Yeah, of course, everything's a town street, otherwise we wouldn't be paving it. We don't well, pave private streets. There are homeowner associations. They're dedicated to the town as streets, but there's also condominium and co-op, and what nobody seems to know, including the boards of trustees, is they are very, three very separate vehicles, and in some cases, the town can put certain restrictions, but in some, like mine, you cannot. Um, the, the awards. We should know more information. In particular, I'm thinking of, let me see, where is it? Uh, the precise construction. I'm not sure where that is that you were giving it to. You mentioned there were others, and they were higher and lower. At a caucus meeting, you would be mentioning the names of every single one of them, exactly what their bids were. And the general public, which is the reason you have these meetings, is to get input from us because you don't know it all. I could give you and you I don't know what you don't know. I, I no, thank you. Oh. This is for the entire town of Brick that you should be giving the information out in one way. It's by go, having the caucus right meeting. No, oh. I don't want it now. Okay. It's not sufficient time for me to give you input. You're not going to listen to me. And that's what it's meant to do. And somebody in the audience might have done what, or in attendance, I should say, what Mr. Foster did and say, by the way, this particular business, I know they're a bad actor. And under the fair bid, or whatever they call that, if you know, like Jack Morris is a bad actor, you have the right not to consider his bids. Uh, it's the law, somebody has access to the research that I have to go to great pains to get. But you can find it. Um, I have brought this up in the past to the planning board, and I'm bringing it, and I brought it here, and I'm bring, gonna bring it again. Number one, I find it very puzzling why 416 has a list of all these places. 
415 doesn't have a list, and it was several names. Again, at a caucus meeting, we would know everything, or we would hear, have the ability to. Um, I find that puzzling. And I have no problem about the festivals and granting the permits. I have a problem about, uh, not necessarily 22, but 23. I've mentioned, and this is what I was referring to a second ago, blocks and lots mean nothing to us, and it's very difficult. I've gone on the Ocean County website and found out what the address of the block and lot is and who owns it and how much taxes they pay. It should have, in addition to the block and lot, the exact address, and if there isn't an exact address, the intersection uh, as closely as you can give it, and especially at the planning board and zoning board. That is something that is very necessary and very necessary to be noticed to the public ahead of time. There's so much more, but again, I have already actually published my website, and I'm going to bring it up on that. The next meetings, I am going to send an email the morning of the meeting if I don't see enough information that's going to be given out. In fact, I don't have it all done today because I got busy. But I will, in the next couple of days, I am going to go out tonight and get all my vittles and bunker down for the next few days, except when I have to go out to the doctor, which may come tonight, and uh, put it all on my blogs and on Oprah's. There are going to be a lot of Oprah requests because there is so much taking place here you don't have the right to do. Thank you. Anybody else? Stephen Brill, Evergreen Woods. For the past six years, I have provided environmental studies concerning the detrimental health effects Mr. from Brill. the finish it's a okay, comment a number sure. eight okay. Thank you. for the past six years I have provided environmental Very studies the concerning the detrimental health effects from the Garden State Parkway and interchange 91 expansion projects what have my elected officials learned they have decided to reconstruct the adjacent Bernie Cook Park to attract the most vulnerable segment of our population children you profess to be the advocates for children by promoting award cer ceremonies. And yet, where their future health is concerned, you have turned a deaf ear. The American Lung Association, the CDC, and other reputable organizations have issued warnings about the breathing of exhaust from diesel trucks, buses, motorcycles, and cars. One must believe that there must be some other motivation driving you. Another park award, or a photo op, perhaps. Prove me wrong conduct an air pollution study. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. President DeYoung. Moving on to 424, Bill Resolution Computer 2018, Madam Clerk. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Computer Bill Resolution in the amount of $1,180,112.20. Moving on to 425, Can I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. second. <laughs> motion by Councilman Mumolo, second by Council Vice President Crete. Open to the public for any questions. Seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Zapsik. Abstain on Gannett newspapers and New Jersey press media, and yes to the rest. 
Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Fontarero. Yes. President DeYoung. Abstain CME. Yes to the rest, please. Moving on, resolution 425, bill resolution manual 2018. Madam Clerk. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the mayor and clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the treasurer for the amounts of the same. Manual bill resolution in the amount of $1,697,204.56. Very good. Open to council. Seeing none. Motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Fosman, second by Councilwoman Pontarero. Open a public for questions. Seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Zepset. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. President DeYoung. Abstain CME and yes to the rest, please. Now we move on to ordinances on second reading. 5-1, amend chapter 288, parking limits at Traders Cove playground parking lot. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I just, the big thing that's missing from the ordinance um, is the fact that it um, expires on September 15th of 2018. Yeah. So we talked about it last time, but the print's not there. Um, Can we add it? It's still not there. Sunset, so I guess you guys are familiar with this. Uh, well, I think we should make a motion to amend that. I make a motion to amend it. Second. Yes, Councilwoman Zapsik. I'm, I'm not sure I understand. It says that the it's a two hour maximum parking and the out parking limits shall be in effect between May 15th and September, September 15th? Yes. And you want it to be May 15th, 2018 to September 15th? Yeah, Correct. Correct. Oh, yeah, so it's for just the for, the, for this for the year? Season. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can All I, right. do we need a roll call, Madam Clerk? Yeah, well, you, when we pass yes, it all, when you're ready. ready. Okay, thank you, Mayor. All right, um, so this, this um, ordinance is, uh, we're, we're trying it out, like I spoke about at the last council meeting, to see how it works. But it um, establishes a two hour parking limit in the playground parking lot of Traders Cove. So a lot of people thought it was all of Traders Cove, uh, but just what, just the playground parking lot. So there's, a, there's spaces that are right there by the playground. Um, and it's a two hour time limit. So it's being done to ensure that the parking lot is being used for the facilities at Traders Cove, such as the, the playground. <laughs> um, and the reason why we have a lot of people who um, maybe don't like to ride boats in the bay or they don't ride, like to ride boats in the lagoons from the house. So the boat will be there, they'll park in the playground um, and then jump on a boat and go over to F Cove, um, which is right next door to Traders Cove. And then all of our parking, because it's the closest to the boat ramp, it's a, it, it's a lot of it, it's filled with those cars, and then the people come to try to use our playground, and it's filled. Um, so we're trying this out for this year between May 15th and September 15th, but today, and <laughs> it's obviously it's being voted on today. Um, and, um, you know, based upon this, we may try it out at some other parks that have similar, uh, similar type of parking um, problems with people using it not for the playground, and for, they're using it for other things such as uh, Bayside Park, once we you know, uh, do that park. Um, a lot of people, I guess, apparently used to park there um, and then walk across to the beach to, you know, as opposed to parking there only for the playground. But we'll deal that with that when we have to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Can I have a motion no, and I, a second? Can I, can, we speak, can I speak on this too? The mayor got to speak on it. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, sure. thank you. Okay. I'm supposed to ask the council. Um, the two hour parking limit, no other park has a two hour parking limit. It's from dawn to dusk. There's 70 parking places there. There's four handicapped, there's one reserved for the, for, the, um, for the vets, and there's 65 parking places. You're telling me that 65 parking places are filled up there with people going into F Cove? I don't think so. If we're restricting the people to two hours. When you do that, you're gonna go up there for two hours, you can take your kids with your carriage, go out there, and play for two hours, the cop comes along, how are they gonna chalk your tires? How are they gonna enforce this? I just think this is ridiculous. I, 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 real, I really do. You know, and, and when, when, if this is voted on and passed, can I ask the township attorney, when does it take effect? It takes effect 20 days after the publication. 20 days it takes effect after. You know what's funny? I went to that site, there's a sign already up. 
why is that? There is, I hear, want everybody want to see it? Parking signs already up. It says two hour parking. Violators will be towed away at Odrum's expense May 15th through September 15th. That's the ordinance number on there. It says number 288-10. This is not in effect. Did anybody get a ticket yet? Uh, uh, what's going on? This should never be up there for these people. This should, that, that should be taken down immediately. There's 20 signs up there. This is a joke. Can I have a motion and a second, please? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Mumolo, second by Councilman Halloran. Open to the public. Yes? First, the councilman shouldn't have had to ask for permission to speak. Nobody, including the mayor, nobody should have been speaking before a motion and a second. If you don't get a motion and a second, Robert's rules effectively says it falls off the table, and that's the end of it. It's gone. Uh, you first get the motion and second, and then you ask council or whatever and give the public the right. <coughs> I have to say that, uh, yeah, I'm perturbed about the sign already being up, and it does say 288. It doesn't say that it is 01 or one whatever. Oh, one, I believe you said, I think that's how they number it. Uh, and that's wrong. But then again, years ago, I remember a particular council person talking about before the person went to the planning board and got permission, the shingles were on the roof of the house. So it doesn't surprise me. And that was the exact expression that was used. This has been going on, and it shouldn't go up until it's approved. That said, I don't believe that there is anything wrong with setting this limit. I understand in places, if you don't have something like this, the residents who have the biggest right to enjoy those facilities can't get a place to park and then can't get there. So I do think that particularly as a trial, it makes sense this year to try it out and see if you can't because there are infractions in so many places and there's laws but nobody seems to know the laws they don't read them can i ask you something if you're going there for a concert and it's two hour parking and you're going to park there what happens i don't believe that that will necessarily be enforced i think it'll probably uh, be set aside set aside maybe uh, by decree but that there will be exemptions to the rule. That's a fact of life in almost everything. I happen to be the exemption to liquor is quick. Quick, uh, a candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. Promise me anything, but give me chocolate. So there are exemptions, and I'm positive that there will be on special occasions like that, just like you did an ordinance and you shouldn't really have to just for a concert, but you can do it ahead of time and say that will be lifted during that time. But I do believe knowing the evil some people uh, spread out these days, we need to have some curbs on what they're going to do and what advantages they're going to take of us, particularly the taxpayers. Anybody else? Seeing none? believe we are at roll call. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. No. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes. Thank you. Moving on, resolutions 5-2. Amend chapter 225, yeah. housing standards, rental CO regulations. Madam Clerk. An ordinance of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending <coughs> Chapter 225 entitled Housing Standards of the Township Code of the Township of Brick to provide for increased regulations of rental certificates of occupancy. Thank you. Brick already has an ordinance requiring a rental CO for all residential rental properties. 
This proposed ordinance tightens that with additional grounds for revocation and or suspension of a certificate of occupancy as well as tenant screening when a change in occupancy occurs. Screening includes checks for activities in the landlord tenant section of Superior Court records of conviction for any municipal or superior court offense and applies not only to the tenant but to all authorized members of the tenant's household. Proof of screening is required and a certificate of occupancy will not be issued without proof of adequate screening. Seasonal rentals are exempt from this process. This revised ordinance also allows for an automatic suspension of a CO to any landlord or property owner who receives a third notice of violation for renting a, premise, uh, renting a premises without having obtained a rental CO in accordance with this code and bars them from obtaining a CO for a period of one year. Can I please have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Motion by Council Vice President Crate, second by Councilman Halloran. Open to the public. Yes, Ms. Call. Ann Call, 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. I know that there is something about checking the receipt of O, and I didn't pay strict attention a couple of years ago when it was brought up, particularly to ensure that the renters in the Maple Leaf Park, who at that point had a big problem with, the park had a big problem with, not the park, the Maple Leaf housing apartments, with drugs and undesirable tenants. And it was a concerted effort by some people who bought the units and rented them out. However, I find this an absolutely unbearable, onerous to put on the general population. I don't think if you went to court it would hold up. Somebody mentioned on the last one, I believe it was about enforcement. You shouldn't be passing one that can have enforcement and there's no way if you're applying this to the entire township to do this that you will have enforcement and in closing on my statements, there happens to be an, a state ordinance, law, statute. Uh, it's known as 88, and I believe that the second part of it, which happened a few years ago, particularly in reference to the co-ops, co condominiums, uh, and not particularly, specifically, and homeowner associations, that before a new buyer would be able to register their deed, file their deed. They had to have a statement from the governing entity of those places. That was, uh, it, now backtrack, one more stipulation, in age restricted, which by statute cannot be less than 55 years and should require that at least one member will be 55 years old that will live there and nobody under the age of 18. And you had to have a statement from the entity, the corporate entity, as to who was going to be living there that was 55. Didn't have to be the owner. Who were the other people? And they never really specifically set out, and there's a big problem as to how can they ensure that there is proof of age given, that nobody's under 18 and one person is at least over 55. I went and talked to the Ocean County clerk a number of years ago and asked him, am I misreading this, that it can't be filed till you have that? And he confirmed to me. However, nobody files it, because particularly where I live, nobody gets it. And there was something I read in one of my advocacy groups that it's questionable. What are they going to use to prove what your age is? The people who were in the habit of demanding license numbers and they were writing it down. And then there's a problem about invasion of privacy. 
But that's true for uh, voter writing, and you see how much secure our voter registration is. So I think this is absolutely the wrong thing to do, and at some point, there are going to be a group of people that are going to rise up and finally demand that you stop. Is the next thing to cordon some of us off into a ghetto and then put us in concentration camps? Maybe. Next. Yes, sir. I'm a landlord in the town. I have a question. I'm not prepared because I haven't read the law. Somebody called me and told me that you have a meeting. Excuse me, sir. I think we need your name and name address and for address. the record. I'm Lyle sorry. Lyle Diamond, 21 Main Sales Square, Freehold. I just moved from there. Um, the requirement that you get a, a, first of all, every tenant I have, I do a criminal background check and I have an eviction. What's your basis for denying it? Who denies it? The township yeah. or us? We don't mm -hmm. deny it. Not at all. Deny. We're just asking the landlord to do what you do. Okay. And that's your onus to live it. Well, that's up to you to do. We just want proof that you did it. Okay. So, so you, so you don't have to put the person's name down there or anything. Okay, so I do a criminal background check and the person's a drug dealer. Excuse me, you, you, they have to put the names, so we're gonna, we're gonna watch these people. When he's gonna go for a, a background check, we're gonna put the names down, you're gonna put the names down on application, <coughs> and we're gonna, the cops will probably watch your house because they're gonna see who was no, in there. You're gonna no, give them no. all that information. No, you don't understand. No. I do. Understand. What it is is we're allowing no, the landlord. Correct. Okay. We're asking the landlord, I'm a landlord in town. Okay. I do the same thing you do. I do a credit check, I do a criminal check. All they want is proof that you did a criminal check. The town does not want to see the, the criminal check. They don't want to see So you the, just want to show proof that it was done? That you did. Yes. yes. I actually yes. use transunion. Yes. And the tenant actually does it on themselves, and I get the report. So I don't have to get permission from them. They send me the thing. So all you want to see is a, a report. Did. So yeah. if you have a bad ten, a landlord, which I'm not, of course, right? <coughs> and the person does a background check. They don't really look at it. And the person is a drug dealer. What happens? We're not telling them that they can or can't rent it. That's, okay. that's not. I was concerned doing. about that's that. Not mm -hmm. We're not doing that at all. It's frivolous. Right. Okay. It's not. We're not telling them anything. We just want, we want the landlord to be responsible to do the due diligence of who he's renting to. If he wants to rent to uh, whoever, he's still going to be able to rent to that person. There's no discrimination by any means be, being done here. It's just that we want the landlords to know who they're renting to. That's it. We want to make sure that they know who they're renting to. Okay, I'm 100% for that, but because I've had tenants that move in, there's a kid there, and the kid's okay until he becomes a drug dealer. That's actually <laughs> happening. That can happen, you know? too. That so, can this happen. is not good. This is not going to prevent that. No. This is yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a good idea, but the whole. But then you're the landlord. You should be doing that yourself. You we shouldn't have to. Over. We shouldn't have to tell you to do it. You're a landlord. You should just but do you it yourself. You know, if you're a landlord. You do know this, right? Woman moves in with a couple of kids. All of a sudden, the boy comes in. How do you prove he lives there? Yeah. Well, that's that's a that's. So how does that affect me? Away. If the boyfriend moved in, which I don't want to anyway, because I didn't screen. Technically, him. by law, you, when you fill out your application for a landlord, you have they tell how many people are living in the house. Correct. Then you put the names down of who's living in the house. So if something does happen, that person is not legally supposed to be there. You can call code enforcement, they will come out. They can come out. I asked code enforcement and they told me they can't do anything. I had a, I have a tenant, I had a tenant rather, and it had four people supposed to be there. I right. probably had six people there. I asked code enforcement if they could do anything. They said they, they don't have to do Do you know that guy's name? I'm not going to no. mm. All right, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. He is a tough landlord, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a good one. My name's Mike McNeil. I'm the chairman of the state for the NAACP for all housing in the state of New Jersey. Um, I called the day, um, I think I spoke to the mayor and whoever else Can you else raise that up a little? Yes, sorry. Thank, Thank you. I had spoken to yeah. the mayor and whoever else was in the room that I had some concerns. Um, I understand what you want to do, and as I said, I sent an email out today that I don't want you to think that, you know, against what you want to do, but I just want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. And I don't know whether or not, you know, you read the HUD's guidelines and what HUD has said, you know, on that. 
So I wanted to make sure we both got the same copy. Same copy. Great. Yeah. Because um, as I s we spoke today that I know that you followed the Tom's River um, guidelines on the way it was set up there, but you made some changes. What I ask you to do, if, if it's possible, to make sure that the entire committee has read and, and meet with some of us, because we have some questions. And I think that um, where you think that folks are against what you want to do, you're totally wrong. The issue is that the way it was done in a sense that, I know this is your second reading, but the first time I heard it um, about it was today, this morning rather, at 6 o'clock in the morning, and my phone hasn't stopped ringing um, since then. Um, calls throughout the entire state of people having meetings. And I sent an email out so you understand that um, I talked to the mayor of the town. Um, the mayor said that, you know, we could sit down and, and talk about some of the concerns I have. But we have no reason not to support what you want to do, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. There are a couple of things in there that bother me, um, especially when, they, when you talk about evictions. If some of you that that don't know me. Um, I'm in court um, every Monday, every Friday, and, and work with evictions. So I truly understand that. And everything that might be on a person's record that they've been evicted, really, they're not. And if you look at some of the new laws that they're on um, the bills, excuse me, the bills that are out there now, especially the ones that I believe that Ron Rice and a few people are trying to change on the blackball <laughs> list, that's where a lot of this came from. So I just don't want to see you get tangled up in a whole mess of things and all I ask you to do is just take a step back today and and if we can just present a couple of questions and I believe that we can um, you know move on from there but do not want you to think that do not understand um, what the concerns are of the people I hear them everywhere everywhere I go so I just want to make that clear to you so if you think about that or what I just said I would appreciate it thank you thank you <coughs> Sam Foster, Chico Drive. Uh, first, I wanted to say that I agree with the uh, man who spoke with, uh, who said it was a landlord, because my uncle was a landlord in town. He owned uh, two condos or three condos in Maple Gardens, and he had big problems with uh, code enforcement. And uh, he d got very little, if any, help at all. And I'm, I know that firsthand because I'm the one who had to, he had to file complaints against his tenants, and I'm the one who had to file them in court because he was cr paralyzed, so I couldn't get down there. So I agree with him. I do have a question, though, uh, and I wanted to ask about this land, this background check uh, issue here. Why wasn't this addressed back in 2015 when, when this, uh, the township passed the uh, Landlord Responsibility Ordinance? Uh, that was, uh, I called it up uh, here. This was back in uh, 2015. Uh, it requires any landlord whose tenants violate criminal or municipal laws more than twice to post a bond. I don't know if you people remember that ordinance that was passed back then or not. I don't this know how many of you were on the council back then also. This is a different ordinance. It's a different chapter. I understand, but it's still, it's still dealing with the tenant-landlord issue. So mm -hmm. I was in this all consolidated into one issue so you could deal, deal with it all at the same time at that time. Because right. the issue is uh, violations of the law. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the question I have is that since uh, 2015, the, count, the uh, township uh, passed the Landlord Responsibility Act. Why didn't this also? Why didn't you also put this into uh, uh, at least try to edit it all at one time instead of drawing it out? As long as it has been three years later, you're now proposing a uh, ordinance about the uh, background checks on people because it does all tie in because you're dealing with uh, yeah. crime. Anybody have an answer? Uh, uh, hi, Mr. Foster. How are you? No. So at the time we did know. that, pardon? I said you don't want to know how I am. Oh, okay. You think that Nan Collins is bad mood? You don't want to get. You don't want to know what mood I'm I'm in right now. But never mind. Not going to take it out on all of you. But anyway, I'm sorry. I partially joking. Don't worry. My blood pressure medication is working, so yeah, don't worry. Go Thank ahead. Um, so at the time the uh, responsible landlord ordinance was put in place, it was kind of the first step forward to see if we, if the council could make some substantive change in some of the issues that were being brought to our attention about, you know, problem um, tenants. Uh, and as that went forward, that uh, turned out to be a, a strong, a good step forward because we implemented that program. 
we had a, a first case before a hearing officer that ended successfully and the neighbors in that uh, area were very happy. But as we went forward with that, we saw pieces of it that weren't quite covered in that ordinance. So we wanted to take a look at those pieces and not leave anything behind and strengthen what we had already put in place. So rather than tweak that one, we started fresh with a new and a separate ordinance to um, address some of the issues separately. So it's just a constant process that the council goes through through their committees of looking at what's working, what can we do better, what can we do differently. Okay, once the background check is conducted on the uh, uh, tenant, I believe it is. I put it away so I don't read it. What uh, specifically uh, does it make it? Does it differentiate between someone with an arrest record as opposed to a conviction record? So it's all lumped in. Okay, but so what is so this is a useless law? No, it's not useless. Well, that's what it's so sounding it's up to like. The landlord. Yeah, I mean, that, it's up I mean, to the landlord to do his due diligence. We already have laws in place. We yeah, I, I know you, you don't, the only one that's making sense up there. So, how many people are living there? That's See, yeah. See, because uh, you know, I mean, you're the only one making sense up there because I, I'll be. You all know my my history here in the township and everything. See, if I have a background check done on me, it's going to show an arrest record. However, that does not all that background check does not say. That I would ask you all know what the problems that I have with the brick police. It does not say the background check is they're not going to tell any landlord or anybody else. I have this problem with employers. I have to explain during a job interview. Well, yeah, I went in front of Judge Peterson. He right. found me not guilty. He said the brick police falsified evidence against me and falsely arrested me. That does not is not conducted in a background check. Now, what about someone like me well, who has a, an arrest record but this, not, this was not, is not a criminal? We're you know? the town up for a discrimination lawsuit. That's what's going to happen here. The town. That's is not why. The but the, the township that's is the one that's why, passing this that's council. That's why the township should not pass this. We should not be responsible. We're setting ourselves up for lawsuits. We have enough lawsuits in this yeah, I mean, yeah, when you get a hold of mine, you're gonna, your eyes are going to pop. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it, it just it seems unfair to me because it penalizes people who have none, done no harm and associates them all in the same group. And it's I know this from my experiences getting it, trying to get a job. You know, I, I noticed from experience, I have to sit down with an interview. I've been fortunate to have some employers who will listen to me and would check with, like, the state police and the FBI. And they can say, yeah, we know what happened here. Brick Township did this to them. But I just think that this is an issue that uh, is, uh, like I said, I, I agree with Councilman Fosman. He's the only one that seems to be making sense up there. It's, uh, hey, it, look, it, hey it, look, let me tell you. I got a renter next door. The guy's a sex offender. I can't, I couldn't stop him. So it's not going to make a difference. But I thank you, Councilman Fosman. You're, you're the only one making sense up here, so thank you. Next, Mr. Alina. No. Good evening, uh, Mrs. Jong, members of council, Mr. Mayor. I'm Jeffrey Alino. Uh, I live at 128 Captain's Drive. Uh, most of you probably don't know my background. I'm a retired real estate broker. I've sold and rented real estate in Brick Township for about 30 years. I am also a landlord personally in Brick Township for about 40 years. I'm pleased to report to you that during that time, I don't think I would, I've ever had a police involvement with any tenant that I've had because I take certain steps. Uh, Mr. D. John, would you give me a one minute notice if I have to cut off, please? There are several things, having said that, that I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned about what will happen with a criminal report that's turned into the township. Will it be kept in the building department? Will it be shared elsewhere? Uh, what steps would be taken? And would those backs only be taken if something occurs? You don't turn in the report. No. We're not to receive the report. I have to complete the report and just certify that I did it, I presume. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. One thing. Um, there are several other questions. Um, I noticed that this it does not change the 2015 resolution that was passed. I looked immediately for words that said it superseded it, replaced it. It adds, refers only to in addition to that ordinance. And I'm getting a, a, sh a shake from uh, council, so forth. And I'll come back to that, so forth. We often, I've had council members and others say, well, we just want to know who is in the unit. 
So we're going to do it that way. Well, those people probably have not filled out a tenant rental CO application. First question is, what is the address of the property? Second question is, please list all the people who will occupy it, both children and adults. So you already have that so forth. Um, I am concerned that there is a provision in this that states that if you are guilty, um, you will have a penalty. And one thing you can't do is renew an existing lease. Well, got a conflict. State law says that I have to do it. I have no choice. There's an old saying in being a, land, a landlord, if he pays, he stays. There are very few reasons that I can get an eviction for a tenant unless he stops paying. It can be done, but it's extremely difficult and so forth. Um, what I don't find in this resolution that would be, I think, appropriate, I'm looking for an indemnity clause for a landlord. If the landlord does some of these things that the townships require, and they're very unusual, I have never seen them uh, anywhere in any of my 40 years, and I've rented properties both in New Jersey and Florida and New Hampshire. So it's sort of uncovered ground at this point. Uh, I would like to think that if I get fined, drawn into court, and I have costs, I have need for legal representation, because I did what the township requires, the township be, should be willing to indemnify me if anything happens where I have those costs. Um, in addition, I, I am concerned about a couple of other things. I'm concerned about what is a landlord. And I'm not sure if the council particularly, um, particularly knows this. It may not have been brought to your attention. And council's telling me this is just an extension of the 2015 ordinance. It refers under the definitions of a landlord that a person who offers for lease has their property is a landlord. And it continues, which building contains no more than four rental units? Let me repeat, lease can, in a building which contains no more than four rental units. Would seem, and that's in lay language, declarative sentence, it's not legalese and I'm not an attorney. It would seem that that exempts waterside gardens, brick estates, Maple Leaf, and probably about 30 other apartment and condo complexes in town. It seems that we're focusing on the little guy, and probably we've eliminated 95% of the units in town that are a problem. Um, I hope the town council will take that into it. I don't know why that's there, but it's been there for a long time. Um, I have a half a dozen questions. I'll give you just the questions quickly. Know a friend who has a tenant been in for 10 years? We have good, 30 seconds, good, Mr. Alina. I needed a minute, so forth. I could give you half a dozen things about bringing the family in. Uh, I've had a tenant for 30 years. Suppose it gets bad next year. Am I to be held accountable for not knowing 30 years in advance? I suggest this. I've been saying this recommendation to council for years. If you have an ordinance that affects a particular group of bu uh, business people, the first thing you should do is sit down with reliable people in that field and get their input. You want to know about somebody's 30 years in the business? Uh, you want to, they've been around the block a few hundred times and you should talk to them first. I want to thank council for all your time. I know you put a tremendous amount of energy. Probably you go home many evenings with a migraine headache, wishing you had gone out to dinner with your family instead and had a good time. And I appreciate your commitment to our community. If I could just, uh, sure. for, the, for the members of the audience and the council, uh, there's been a number of comments by the public, very good comments, and, and I believe there's still going to be more comments, but I'd like to just um, answer a few of the points that have been raised. The ordinance does not require the production to the township of the background check. That's, that's an important point, and a few people have asked that. The town does not get the background check. The township... This only applies on the change of occupancy of a rental unit. At that time, the landlord provides us a letter saying that the background check has been done. Okay, so it's on a change of occupancy, a letter saying it's been done. The township does not get the results of that test. The town is not requiring or directing a landlord to rent or not to rent to someone. They're merely directing the landlord to conduct a background check for their own records. Um, as far as uh, the question of whether this applies to arrests, it is limited to convictions in the last three years. It's not to arrests, it's convictions in the last three years. 
Um, and as far as the last question of whether this applies to sort of exempts large apartment complexes, it does not. It applies to all rental COs in the township. All rental COs is under a specific section that applies to all rental units in town. You need to get a rental CO. There is a separate ordinance which was adopted in 2015, characterized as an animal house ordinance that dealt with unruly tenants. This doesn't deal with uh, something that's going on on a property once they're in, uh, when you think of animal house. And that ordinance was adopted in 2015, uh, applied to those kind of uh, isolated properties. This applies to all rental <coughs> units. It does not exempt large apartment complexes. It's not favoring the big guy over the little guy. It's applying to everyone in equal fashion. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good evening. I'm Fred Rush. I'm the president of the NAACP in Ocean County, Lakewood. And the reason that I came here today is because of an article that I saw in the Asbury Park Press. And it simply said, um, the change is an attempt to keep bad renters out. Um, landlords will rent to anybody as long as they are receiving a check. The only problem that I have with it, it could be discriminatory. And it leads to, to all sorts of problems. <coughs> Now, discrimination, I don't have to tell you, but you guys know that. The easiest form of discrimination, if you've been mm -hmm. treated differently than someone else in a similar situation, um, you could have said, it might say that you've been discriminated against. I'm only here to protect not only the interests of the town, because I don't live here, but I shop here. I come to here all the time. Um, but there are a lot of people that live in this, uh, this town. I don't know what your population is, but it's certain a lot of renters. My daughter used to live in Riverside Gardens. I think that's way over there somewhere. But that was 10 years ago. So I am concerned that, that you have to have a law like that. But I also understand to some degree that we have to have certain laws. I think this is one of the ones that doesn't uh, hold a lot of water. So. Um, and the enforcement part of it, you know, it will become discriminatory because that's what happens in America. It's the haves and the have nots. The people that are least um, disenfranchised, they're gonna be the ones that uh, <coughs> affect it the most. And sure, there might be the ones that, I mean, had a criminal record because they could get out of it because <coughs> they had the funds to, to pay a lawyer and John Doe didn't have any funds. So, you know, just think about what you're saying. But I know you have a right, and you want to keep this an all-American city. But sometimes I wonder what that means. All-American city could mean I'll keep out less desirables, whatever that means. And you can put that in context of uh, a whole lot of things. But as long as people don't, don't get hurt, it's not the worst idea in the world, but it's the way it's going to be used. I, I really, uh, um, I saw your articles, Mayor, and, and that's the only reason I come here. And I got some phone calls, too. So I said, well, let me come here tonight. And uh, thank you for allowing me to speak, uh, even though I live in the next town over. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet, please. Mm -hmm. Sir, in the back, all the way. No, sorry. Go ahead, come on up. Christopher Alino, 143 Clubhouse Road, Brick, New Jersey. Um, I would, I want to thank the council for hearing me today. Um, I would kind of request that you don't include this new ordinance in uh, the new proposed ordinance, I think it puts a lot on the landlord. The landlord doesn't c control everything. I mean, I've been a landlord for 31 years in Bricktown. Um, we're, all, we're already regulated a lot. I mean, no, no landlord wants a bad tenant, trust me. You know what I mean? Um, I think most everybody that I know screens their tenants pretty well. Um, 
it's very hard. You know, once you have a tenant, you're stuck with them. That's that's what you have. You know what I mean? Um, I think the housing and urban development has guidelines against this for discrimination. Totally that uh, violates the Fair Housing Act. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could be a lawsuits on this. I'm just pointing that out. Um, and if you have a tenant that gets in trouble, it doesn't it doesn't actually happen right away. I mean, everybody's innocent and prov until proven guilty. So if I had a tenant that's been there for 15 years, it's happened before. They get in trouble with the law, they get an attorney, okay? It doesn't get hurt for a year or two in court. They get in trouble with drugs. It's not like next week I can run down there and just file for eviction and get rid of them. It doesn't work like that. They're innocent until proven guilty. I cannot file for eviction until they either plead guilty or they get, you know, get, so it's, it's really hard for the landlord. Um, I would request that, you know, consider landlords. Where there's a lot of stuff in here, landlord, landlord, about bad landlords and stuff like that. I think everybody wants the same thing. I've been a landlord for 31 years. I know everybody in code enforcement. I'd be more than happy, along with a lot of other people, to sit down and, and try to work with maybe some people that rent only once in a while. But um, we, d we really don't need to put all these ordinances against landlords. I mean, I can't be responsible for every person forever my whole life. I mean, we try, to, everybody tries to get the best tenant possible. Everybody wants the same thing. Um, you know, sometimes life happens with some of these people and I don't have control of their life, you know what I mean? And, and once again, if they do get in trouble, it's not like I can run down and file for eviction and get rid of them. It doesn't work like that. Again, if the police go after them, it's, it's at least a year to two years before they get a conviction, before I can even file to get rid of them. It's not like I can just say, I'm, I'm not going to renew your lease. It doesn't work like that. It's against the law. Okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, I have to ask a question before we... Sir, can you wait until you get up to the mic? <laughs> People Apologize at home won't be able to hear you. Again, my name is Mike McNeil. I had asked a question before and it really wasn't answered and then um, I heard the gentleman speak about it again about eviction. I'm trying to understand how does eviction fits in this part, you know, like what would be your concern if, if I got, e um, got evicted? Um, say um, I was sick and I got, you know, five evictions on my, so what does that mean? I mean, explain to me, I, I need to know that because that's the stumbling block for me. It, wa it wasn't me. I don't, I don't know. It was, I didn't say, make a statement. I talked so I well, when you I, maybe it was I Mr. talked Fosman. about discrimination. But he had mentioned about eviction. That's but what go I ahead. talked about. He, he had brought up about eviction. No. That's why I came back no. to the mic. I just yeah. want to understand yeah. what is it that you have the, you know, the eviction part. I, I just, that floors me. I, I didn't answer. I didn't ask a question about eviction. I don't know why, you're, ordinance, why you this, thought I did. This particular ordinance does not have anything on it about eviction. This particular ordinance, all this says is that we're requiring a landlord to do a check, a criminal check. We don't want to, the town does not want to see it. We just want the landlord, we just want the landlord to do it so he's, he did his due diligence and know he could rent to whoever he wants. We're not saying he can't rent to anybody. Oh, no, I, I, I understand that. Right, so there's but nothing about eviction. Am I hearing clearly that no one up here said about the eviction? I didn't know. Okay. I didn't ask no. the, the, I, the ordinance asked you to check two things. For activity in landlord-tenant court. Right. Whether the person's been to landlord-tenant court in three years. And that was, said, that was correct. Different. And if they have a criminal conviction in the last three years, that's it. They didn't put the criminal part on it. Okay. It's what the landlord does with that is up to them. But it's to and and they when they fill out their application and and actually one of the issues that the, the last gentleman raised is what happens if I get a tenant who does this? This, this doesn't regulate that. Obviously, no. once your tenant moves in, if they're a bad tenant. That's your issue. This ordinance does not apply. This is on a change of occupancy. A new tenant comes in, a landlord comes in to get a rental CO for a new tenant. We ask them to provide us a letter that they have done a background check that asks for the last three years of a criminal background, conviction check, not arrest, conviction, and activity in landlord-tenant court so that the landlord is apprised 
of who they're renting to. That's it. What they do with it, that's up to them. But we have had landlords come to us when we dealt with this other ordinance where we had bad tenants, and they said, oh, I wish I, I, wish I had done X, Y, and Z before I rented to this person. We just had some, you know, nobody wants a bad tenant. We're trying to tell people, landlords, don't have a bad tenant. And, and I agree with you. But don't the town already have ordinance that, that are not being enforced today? Not that's that the part is. I don't understand. Why are we making, I just not don't get it. You know, and I think that that's the reason that I said if you could possibly hold off on this so that there could be some discussion. I understand what the issue is, um, and, I, and I really don't want to say what's on my mind here, but I do understand what the issue is. And I think that it's that we all need to really talk about it. That's the only way you're going to fix this problem is talk about the truth. I understand what the problem is. But if you fail to, to sit up there and, you know, say like, you know, this is what it really is, and it's not. I understand what the problem. I know what's going on. As I said to you before, I'm the chairman of the state. I see all the issues about housing. I see all the complaints in the neighborhoods all over the place. I truly understand. But what I'm saying to you that we need to have some conversation. That's all I'm asking you, to just clarify some things and, and no more. Thank you. Uh, John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, first of all, I wish you would pull this thing. Do it in two weeks. I hate this whole setup ever since I've been coming here of not letting public speak on the first ordinance because a lot of this would have been done before this meeting and then you could have voted on it. Right now, I mean, if I was anybody up there, if I was on that council, I'd be voting not to vote. It's just not, you're not ready. And we have 10 people already offered to give you help, but you can't get help in the next five minutes. You can get it in two weeks maybe, but you're not gonna get it in five minutes. So why don't we wait two, two weeks on this, speak to about 10 of these different people that wanted to offer you some help, and make sure everybody understands it. I, you know, I read the thing last week, and I'm, I'm telling you again, once again, I said, geez, it only seems like all they want is a landlord to do the right thing. Great. But it just doesn't come across that way. So I would recommend it, two things. One, pull this one for tonight. And in the future, let the public speak on the first, or first time they read it for any ordinance. This way, in case there is a question, at least a short question, we can go back and say, hey, yeah, maybe we should look at that a little more. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? My name is Peter Lafredo. I happen to reside in Jackson, but do have a rental property here in Brick, so I hope that I can speak at today's uh, thing. I do understand, I've heard what people have said. I've heard uh, a little bit from what you have said. The one thing I haven't really heard is I haven't heard purpose. What is the purpose behind other than a landlord having to do their due diligence? It seems to me that what we're doing is having the town or state or government impose upon a person to do something because we don't think they can do it. And that's a concern of mine um, when I look at this. We are in a technological age. You know what? I can go on the internet and I just did because I heard about this just a few days ago. I am a landlord. I can go on the internet. I can do all of these checks and I can get them done. If I want to as a landlord, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But the concern is, what's the purpose here? Why does the town just want me to do it, to give you a letter? And I heard Mr. Alino say he had to certify that he did it and that was okay. And I heard some council members say, yes, that's not what this says. I've heard that a letter has to be given. It sounded like a letter had to be given from me. It's not what this says. I have to get it from the screening company that gives me a letter that says, I did it, to give to you, to be put in there. So what I look at this and I just say, what is the purpose? That was, that was my main, main thing. When I look at this, as a lawyer, I do represent tenants, I represent individuals, a lot of individuals in different regions. I look at section 5.1 and wonder what the interrelationship is with 5.2. Is there going to be a situation, which I was kind of hearing from the landlords, 
what happens if I get this, I rent to somebody, someone has a record, something happens in the house, okay, is somebody going to come back to me as the landlord, and wait, is the town going to come back to me under 5.1 because there might have been a dangerous occupancy, and I'm going to get my tenancy, CO, revoked? I don't know that that's the way it interplays, but it's a possibility. We do a lot of things, we think about a lot of things, but sometimes when you put them on paper and when you really look at it, it doesn't all work and make sense. I understand that we ought to be doing our diligence. I think it's great if everybody says, hey, uh, but we have a lot of tenants out there. Those that are seasoned, they know this stuff. They know they can go on the internet. They know they can get all these checks. It's those people that don't. It's those people that don't go out and get an attorney because they're buying a house, entering a lease, or doing anything. They don't come to us. They do it on themselves and then say, oh, I wish I would have known. Well, they would have known if they did it the right way, and they still do. I'm just concerned about what it is. I've heard things about saying to pull it and really look at it. I think maybe you ought to. Um, and look at what is the purpose. What are you doing here? What really is the purpose of this? And I'm concerned about those two. That's all I say, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Council President, I'd like, to make a, I'd like to make a motion to send this back to committee, Second. this ordinance, for re to look and, and listen to other people. Let's send it back to committee and get some more input before we pass it. Yeah, I think we wasted our money on this ordinance. We paid the lawyer five, five grand just to do it. Okay. It's a waste. I don't know about that, but it's not a, is. nothing's a waste. Yes. Can we have a... This is dystopia. Okay. Dystopia. It, thank you. Do we need to have a roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes, please. Okay. Roll call, the please. Mo the motion and the second is to hold off on the oh, agenda. Okay. I would have voted no on this anyway. Are you ready for the roll yes, call? Yes, please, roll call. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Craig. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Definitely yes. Councilwoman Ponderero. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to 5-3. Authorized sale of block 702, lot 8, and portion of 3, Chambers Bridge Residence. Madam Clerk. An ordinance of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of the township land known as block 701, lots 8, and part of 3, located at 175 Chambers Bridge Road. This ordinance allows for the sale of township property, specifically the property on which the Chambersbridge residence is located to National Church Residences, NCR. The purchase price is $1,650,000, which is consistent with an appraisal completed on the property. The building on the property is owned by Homes Now, Inc., who has been contracting with NCR to manage the property for many years. As a condition of sale, the affordable housing restrictions and obligations that currently regulate the Chambersbridge residents remain in place. Specifically, the condition to record a deed of easement that extends the affordability housing obligations and restrictions through 2044. Can I please have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Mumolo, second by Councilman Halloran. Open to the public, please. Seeing none, close public. Roll call. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Craig. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes. Thank you. Now we are on to public comments. Madam Clerk. Please note that each person addressing the council during any section of the meeting during which public comment is permitted shall limit his or her remarks to five minutes pursuant to Brick Township Administrative Code Section 2-33B. Norm Gross, 38 Lagoon Drive, West Najeko Beach. Our lagoon was damaged by Hurricane Sandy. 99 and 9 tenths of the lagoon is perfect. 
We've got one area, roughly 50 by 100, that is causing damages to our boats. We've had some injuries, and it's right at the entrance of the lagoon. I brought along an aerial map. A few people with the clerk. Clerk. Yeah. Uh, Give it to the clerk. Yeah. The secretary. Jekyll Beach is a social club. Our dues are $200 a year. We allow our members to pay the dues in uh, payments. Uh, if we need work done in the community, we have volunteers. My neighbor moved in a year and a half ago. He's in the landscaping business, and all of a sudden he's got three jobs to do in our community. Free, okay? Uh, when this happened, I came to the town hall and I was directed to Ms. Cummings, Melissa yeah, Cummings. She was the coordinator for the- She's engineer, our engineer. Army Corps of Engineers. She was handling all this. And I bothered her for a year and a half. Phone calls, emails, and we never, we never made the list with the Army Corps of Engineers. My other neighbor, Mr. O'Donnell, has been in touch with you, the mayor, and we have, we need help. We need financial help to open up our lagoons. <coughs> what exactly is, is wrong with that? You didn't explain exactly what the problem is. The hurricane <coughs> shoaled up the entrance to the lagoon. Okay. Oh, okay. This section here, right yeah, at the beginning, right, right, the right mouth. Up, right up there. And it, it, it affects business in it's, the it's town of Brick Township. Kramer can't get his barge in there. Last year, he had to dig his way in to replace a bulkhead. He had to dig his way out. So of the, of what you're looking at is a dredging? You're looking, the looking for dredging. dredging. The mayor has cooperated, and the town will provide the engineering, correct? To the, to the to tune of $60,000 or something like that? That's, that's correct. The town will complete the hydro hydraulic survey that's yeah. necessary for us to determine the depth of the, the dredge should it proceed. Right. Yeah. And we will offset the cost of the permit yeah. process and submit the permit on behalf of the um, property owners. We pay a premium. The 25 or 26 homes on the lagoon pay a, a 30, 35% premium in taxes uh, because we're on the water. I want to be on the water. I want to run my boat in and out safely. We cannot run. I sit on my deck last year, I'm going to say 15 times, 20 times, somebody who does not live in our lagoon comes in and yells to me, you got a problem. We just ran aground. We just broke our prop. And I say, we're sorry. We're working on it. We're, we're concerned that there's going to be a an injury this year. We're concerned that there's going to be more damage to boats. Many of our many of our neighbors have had over a thousand or two thousand dollars worth of damage. And so I'm pleading with you tonight. We need money somehow to, to get this done. Normally, it's not the, the, the council that pays to dredge. You did it before, okay, and you've done it. You've done you, you've done it in recent of, years too. I know a lot of areas in, in the town. There's a lot of areas that need to be dredged too. But I understand. We assist, and then it's the homeowners as a joint effort that do the dredging and pay for the dredging that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not aware of that. That we that the town has done it before. They have. Was was there a different mayor there? Absolutely, no. and okay. I voted for him. Right. Not because of that. I know. Right. So we've got a, a serious situation. We've had some injuries. My neighbors banged his head badly, cut his head. Another person hurt his shoulder. And we're not aware of all the injuries because non-residents use our lagoon. It's a sightseeing visit on Saturdays and Sundays. They bring it. 
Some is friends it out. Mud or sand? Is it mud or it's sand? Sand. 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 It's, it's a hard, a hard bottom. Not my. Yeah. Not the silk. It's shoaled in. Yes. Do we know? Do we? What do, do we know any status of? If so we we certainly do emphasize, as you know, we've met with with. Um, members of your community a few times. So there's nothing we would like to do more than to see your um, lagoon and, and the many, many private um, lagoons in town, the small, uh, that, that service a certain number of homes, dredge so that you guys can enjoy the benefits of what you have. Uh, with that said, we have offered the same uh, type of assistance to the many groups like yourself that would like for us to dredge their lagoon, which is we will do the survey we will offset the cost of the permit. We will assign township staff to do all the work involved with the permit um, and go to Trenton as we need to go to Trenton to secure the permit so that it can be dredged. And we ask that the uh, homeowners and or the associations that are impacted by the dredge project identify a, a site for the dewatering and identify a contractor which, to complete which, the dredging. Which we have. Right, so we've made that same um, agreement to any group that comes with us to have a private, mm -hmm. um, basically a private lagoon dredged. So um, we ask for the commitment of that before we expend the dollars on the survey and the permit work uh, because we don't want to spend $60,000 for a project that never goes forward because the other half mm -hmm. of the arrangement wasn't able to be met. So with that said, um, I just wanted to set the table for the council or for any, any folks here that weren't aware of the, the totality of the picture of what we've been trying to do to assist with the dredging. We have also, at the mayor's direction, we have, and he has personally lobbied and the new administration, the DOT Maritime Resource, um, the, the state agency that does dredging that we would like to see them keep their word, which they made after Sandy, that they would come in and do all of these dredge projects, which was absolutely necessary. And then they ran out of money and stopped. So there was a promise that was unfulfilled that it's not a promise that we can necessarily financially now take because another agency made a promise that they couldn't keep. So we have lobbied them vehemently and um, diligently to take a look at building on contracts that they may have for bigger projects and doing some of the smaller lagoons. So the mayor has made some progress. We've had a few calls with uh, the folks at DOT Maritime Resource, and we're going to continue to work that angle uh, vehemently because that's the best solution for all of us. It gets Thanks. your it gets your projects dredged. It um, gets it done, hopefully, without any um, additional financial resources needed from um, that you or the town, although we've made our agreement to, to like I said, to fund the permits and the survey. Uh, so that's the, the avenue that we've taken. And right. I have copied Mr. Donnell on the communications that we've made to the state right. um, and have continued to follow up. So that's, I guess, the overall picture response that I have for you with what we've done and what we'd like to try to continue to do because we do agree with you that it needs to be done and it should be done and we want for it very much to be done. We're also aware that in Long Beach Island, yes, they did a project this past winter. They dredged the entrances to eight lagoons. And so we used that project to re-engage them in a conversation to say, you've always told us that you wouldn't do it, <laughs> and here's an example that you are doing, and we need you to do the same in Brick right. Township. We use that as an exact example now, to get them back engaged have, in this conversation. We've, we've gone to our senator, we've gone to our assembly people, and. They haven't been as nice as you. Okay. Well, we are talking to the people that are directing the contractors. We're talking to them to say, there's got to be a way, while these guys are out here doing these projects, they can come in and do some of these little ones. Is that going to mean a cost to the township? Maybe, but tell us what that is so we can make an educated decision on if we can help those people. I mean, the Jersey Shore is one of the main assets this state has. There's, there's got to be money to, to keep these lagoons open. It's they're beautiful. Well, their argument has always been, uh, most times it's the mobilization, plans and specs and design, things like that. And what we have said is, if you're already mobilizing on a large scale project, you've taken away the biggest expense of any dredge project. If we, the township, have agreed to do the survey work and the permit work, we've taken away the second biggest expense of the project. So work with us a little bit and direct the contractor here to the township. We're talking about an area of 50, feet by 100 feet, okay? How this adds up to $170,000, 
I should have never went to college. It's the mobilization. It's, it's really yeah, the mobilization. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we're trying to address that by saying, and, and, and it's great that they did this, um, like you said, in Long Beach Island, because that's the exact example we use to get them back engaged in. We've got to do the same thing in Brick Township. So yeah. we will keep you posted on that. We are working very diligently right. to get them engaged, and I think we're doing that in a very positive way. Question, how much waterfront exists in Burke Township? Oh. I know the answer. Well, you, you know the answer. <laughs> well, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Most in the state. Most in the state the, is the, is exactly. the state I give, exactly. right. This, this, is, this is one of our main, main assets. And if we start losing lagoons, and, you know, uh, we're losing the beauty of the state. Yeah, it's it's something I, we, we lobby I, vehemently I mean, for. I, I have the company come, come every summer from out of state, different places. They can't get over taking a, a boat ride on the Makita Pond. They've never seen anything so beautiful. And if we can't uh, continue to be uh, having these lagoons operating safely, our, our town's going to uh, deteriorate. Not in my lifetime, but it's going to deteriorate. I mean, we need some creative help. We need some creative help. And we need uh, somebody to pound on the table and on the doors in Trenton if that's where it has and, to go. And Mayor Juicy has done that. Okay. And we will continue to do that. Should we go there and pick it? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll keep you posted when we feel it's uh, I mean, the time is right. But I think we're having some positive conversations that are leading to real discussion about doing it as opposed to being adversarial. So I'd like to continue to pursue that route and let, let you know how that's going. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sir. Huck, 28 Lagoon Drive West in Brick. Uh, just to reinforce on what Mr. Gross said, uh, we moved to Brick, me and my wife Katie, about two years ago. Uh, a big reason why we came here was because the waterfront, the beautiful lagoons. Um, growing up in North Jersey, I didn't know something like this existed, especially, you know, a re relatively reasonable price point. Um, doing a little research, um, we're paying approximately twice the taxes as a house in similar size directly across the street from us. I assume that's because we're waterfront. So I don't know where that money goes. Um, I assume some of that should go towards maintaining the lagoon, the waterfront. Um, we personally, we're over $4,000 in damages to our boat uh, the past two seasons. It's, uh, like Mr. Gross said, uh, at low tide, it, there's two feet of water there. This is a sample. You can walk across it. Um, you, nothing, nothing really can go out without touching ground. Um, and not only is it money, it's an inconvenience. It's, it ruined our Memorial Day weekend with our family. Took the boat out, prop struck, sucks up sand, it ruins the water pump in the motor. Boat can't go anywhere without overheating. Um, it's a safety issue. Um, you know, the boat's going, even traveling at you know, five miles an hour, no wake speed, the boat could come to abrupt stop. Someone could get knocked off the boat and get hurt. So um, I, I wanna know what needs to be done to get this. I, you answer some of those questions. I appreciate that, but what do we need to do to get this going? Um, is it, you know, I've questioned hiring an attorney to handle this stuff. I don't have time for this stuff. I, I want to get it going. So, um, what do we need to do? Where we last left it was we asked some of your members to identify a uh, dewatering site for the dredge foils. Mm -hmm. And, you know, putting that in writing to us, that's a very essential uh, component of the project. Okay. Uh, so I would certainly suggest having discussion on that. Okay, I, don't, I didn't receive a copy of any of that in writing that there was confirmation. I'll of make the, sure it gets to But that. I'm not saying it wasn't submitted, but again, I didn't come tonight to prepare to talk about the, the dredge, but I hopefully I gave you some helpful information and we'll continue no, to We'll revisit it at a different date. All right, uh, Mayor, thank you for your time. Council, thank you. Have a good thank day. you. Yes. I won't be long, as Shakespeare said, brevity is the soul of wit. Um, just name a couple address. points. Uh, Sir, name and address. Uh, John O'Donnell, and uh, 32 Lagoon Drive West. Thank you. Um, just a couple points. Uh, 
Sandy did in one day what it took 50 years to do. Um, number one, uh, you know, this brick dredged them out to the lagoon in 2000. And uh, just curious as to what transpired specifically between 2000 and now to absolve brick. Uh, <coughs> it seems to me there was a precedent set. Uh, number two, um, like I say, we pay higher taxes for living on the water. Some of that should be applied to this. There's, uh, I think, 26 property holders on the lagoon. <coughs> My boat right now is being repaired by Monmouth Marine. I got another $1,000 damage this spring, uh, I mean in the fall. But um, I, whatever's being done or whatever uh, steps are being taken, we'd like up, uh, irregular updates, and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Yes. No, she's. My name is uh, Don Ziff, 85 Najaco Drive, here in Brick. Uh, to answer the question about the dredge spoil site, I was president at the time when the mayor requested it, and I sent an email to him identifying the site. It was the same site it was used back in 2000. Were you the so, owner of the site, sir? Excuse me? Were you the owner of that site? No. Okay, Actually, the site is owned by the town. It's the street. We, we own... I have the, to check into that. I can't confirm yeah. if that's an appropriate if, spoil site, if it's been reviewed by engineering. It's, you know... It's my question is, though, if the mayor didn't get the email or get yeah, lost or whatever, do we have to resend it? And if so, to whom? I would send it. So it's been sent, I guess. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, to just give you a scope of Najaco Beach, the lagoon, there are 23 houses there along the lagoon. Four of them are not livable because of sandy damage. One of them is up for uh, sheriff sale, I believe. So that, that's 23. You're getting down to what, 18? A um, couple of the people there that live along that lagoon are very elderly, living hand to mouth. If we're going to be asked to come up with the remaining people, to come up with, oh, I don't know, 7,500, 10 grand a piece, do you really think we're going to be able to get them to fork over that much money? If anybody's ever done any fundraising, guess what? Your chances, are, if you can do it, you're better than I am, because I tried it once before. Yeah, this is the first time I heard about this. Yeah. I never heard about so it. Anyway, you. that first gives you just a little background about the neighborhood or the lagoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. No. changing the subject. My name is Carmine Tita. I live at 64 West Canada Drive in uh, Brick. I want to talk about the, uh, the uh, Board of um, Zoning and uh, their attorney for this town that handles it. Uh, he's, he's real heavy handed on his billing. He's absolutely brutal on following any rules of the state as far as doing anything in an appropriate amount of time. He's in dereliction of duty on each and every single time he's had to fill a report out uh, as far as even a, uh, uh, any of the compliances that he had to do. I've had meetings with Joanne. Um, she's been about the only help I've really received. I mean, my original price to, uh, for reviews for this town was supposed to be $4,500. I'm at $9,000. They, I got Tara Paxton billing me, who I pay her her salary, I don't understand why I'm paying her anything besides that, because I, 
this is on a site on 431 Manilokan Road. I bought the old gas station diagonally across from the uh, um, Whitey's. If anybody's from town, everybody knows what Whitey's is. Okay, I'm turning a, a 70 year old gas station into an extremely high end looking office. Right now, I'm at $60,000 in fees between lawyers, engineering, county. I, that's when I'm not spending any money on the renovations. That's what this town has cost me. Talk to the mayor about it a year and a half ago. No help. No help. Anybody. All I know is I keep, every time I get another bill, I get another bill. Then I get threatening letters. If you don't, if you don't pay another $2,000, we are not going to proceed with your file. Oh, I'd love to show you people how they go, things go into his office. He spends an hour to decide who he's going to give it to. Somebody look, then somebody does a report for three hours. Then they memorialize it, and then they give it to another person to review for an hour. Then it goes back to his desk for another hour. I'm being fleeced to death. I don't know how many people, you know, would, would come and stand here, but I live in town. I take great offense to being abused like this. I'm not a Wawa. I'm not a big gas station firm. Little guy, little construction company, okay? I, I wanted to be close to my house with an office. Instead, I'm just getting hammered. And I can't tell you how bad it is. And anybody would love to see it, love to show you guys the bills, the snotty remarks from the lawyer. He had the nerve to send, because I called him, I told him his billing is ridiculous. He sent me a bill for talking to me on the phone about his own billing. Okay? You want to talk about a thief? No, I'm sorry. This is just ridiculous. You got an engineering firm. We were done with engineering. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I think he woke up the other morning and he decided, oh, you know what? I don't have a top of curve mark. Okay, another $480 for him to decide on a top. Come on, guys, enough. It's constant. This is like ridiculous. I'm sorry. And I've, I've had this discussion. And the worst part of it is, is I own this property a year and a half. And if it wasn't for Joanne, getting me at least a vanilla box, meaning at least the outside of the building I could start working on. The water was pouring in, the roof started rotting away, just from sitting, okay? At least I'm starting to get a little something. But in two and a half, almost three months, I should have got a building permit. I just barely got the paperwork through. It's the slowest process I've ever seen. This town is like backwards, it's antiquated. I don't understand it. I've got zoning approvals in county, in, in Hudson County, in Jersey City. Three months, it's a year and a half. What are we doing here? I'm sorry, but this is ridiculous, and I'm not the only one. I'm the only one who's coming here to tell you people who can be fired, okay? This John Miller needs to be fired. Brian needs a discussion, but at least Brian's almost a human. But John Miller, he's a bum, and I'm sorry, I have to be like that, but it's ridiculous. He took four months to attempt to memorialize a meeting when I was approved in October. Not until February, okay? He didn't even put it on the agenda for November, December, and then January, he finally got it signed. He has 45 days to do that by state law. There's another lawsuit, okay? Not that I did a lawsuit, but how many lawsuits does this town want? You gotta put professionals in here that do the job the way they're supposed to. They're being paid. If they don't like what they're making, that's tough. Don't do the job, okay? But this, this is ridiculous. It's. It, it, it's ridiculous to have a law, f a law firm that's from basically the Morristown, Parsippany area down here. They don't care about you. They just don't, okay? They just don't, all it is is a firm that donated money to the mayor's election, and that's what's got me upset, okay? Because I tried to talk to him. He didn't even want to talk to me. Talk to me on a speakerphone, where disrespectful as can be. Unacceptable to me. I'm not a 12-year-old child. And I, I don't know how far this is going to go, but you know what? Somebody ought to want to look at these papers. They would love to. Because if you read them, any one of you, and you know what you'd say? That's a sin. It's a sin. A $4,000. And then the best is now they want me to pay an engineering review fee again. How many, how many engineers do I need to review these plans to make sure I'm going to do the work? Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. It's my own building. Come on. Just getting out of hand, and every month another, another bill, another, you know, another tax, another tax, another tax. You guys, wrong, wrong. Somebody ought to review that whole, that whole department the way it's being done. It's unacceptable. Thank you for your time. Sir, uh, are those copies that you have with you? Excuse me. Are those copies? They might only be one. More than welcome. I could have them copied and brought to you.
What I think would be more appropriate is if you need enough copies for counsel and then just drop them off for sure. us, please. Well, Rob, you have everything here in the tax mm -hmm. file, every single I'm thing sure, I have. I'm sure, but I'd like to see what you specifically have compiled and what you looked at. First I heard of it. Who would you like First me to, who would you want me to deliver? Uh, uh, Jen, our secretary. secretary. And she'll get it to us. Jen Hartman. Hartman. You can get one copy to her and she'll Thank you. Yeah, she'll get one copy to her. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Sam Foster, Chico Drive. Just want to say I can uh, sympathize with the last speaker. I have similar problems with dealing with people in town, specifically the police chief, but you all already know about that issue. Just wanted to thank Councilman Fosman for the common sense he showed today during this meeting. It's nice to see that we have a politician that is on top of things, so I, I want to thank you for that. I do appreciate you, you showing your concern for the public and everything. I also wanted, this is an issue regarding county, but this is public comments, correct? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just wanted to thank, uh, this happened a few weeks ago, I wanted to thank and express my gratitude to Sheriff Mastronardi, Ocean County Sheriff. He uh, did some recent undercover work, and uh, this uh, is uh, one reason why I like and admire him so much. I admired him when he was a Thompson for police chief because he's always led by example. And that's the kind of uh, person we need, not just in law enforcement, but also in politics. He's, I've known him for many years. He helped me out with some legal issues that I had, as did his predecessor, Sheriff Paul Hemus. They're both, uh, Sheriff Hemus was a wonderful, Paul Hemus was a wonderful man. Proud to say I voted for him every time he was uh, up for election. And Sheriff Mastronardi, same thing. Good people, we need that kind of leadership in, in law enforcement. It's unfortunate we do not have it here in Brick Township. I wanted to mention background checks because as I stated, stated in the past, my uncle was a homeowner, uh, he was a landlord. He owned three units over in uh, uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. And you know, the issue is regarding background checks on tenants. My uncle owned those condos in the 1990s. And the first thing he did was he ran background checks on his tenants. So I don't understand why the, the government, and I'm going to you know, speak in general terms, wants to regulate so much because this is one thing that really makes people mad. I can really sympathize with people that, uh, you know, I used to say that the government is as good or bad as people allow it to be when I, during freeholder meetings, because I had many discussions with this over that, over the concept of complaining about the government, the government. But this is common sense. You've got to know who you are renting to. And uh, I, that, that's just, just it. My uncle was uh, just a casual uh, uh, landlord. He didn't really, it wasn't a big money-making thing. He had some money from a, an, an injury and he had some investments, some, uh, some stock that he had. So he invested in a couple of condos and they went on, fr uh, on from there. So he had two or three. I don't think that makes him a major one. But it, the, why does the, the, do you feel the need to do something which is just common sense? I would imagine that most landlords do run background checks. I had an aunt who uh, who used to rent in, uh, here in, in Brick Township, and she had to have background checks done on her, and that was back in the 1970s. So now why is it an issue now that you see the need to try to compel through legislation uh, something, an issue like this. I mean, seriously, if it's, if it's going to stay with the landlord and not go anywhere else, then it just, uh, it just doesn't seem any, it doesn't make any sense to me because this is, to me, it's a prime example of overregulation. I could understand if the police wanted to know who was there in, in case of, uh, you know, keeping an eye on, you know, a child molester or something like that. Well, we have a state law already that covers that. That would be Megan's law. And I noticed because when I lived in African Woods, a uh, sex offender moved in there and I had the police knock on my door and show me his photo and everything to let me know that there's a sex offender that moved in. But this is one of the problems that we have with government, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody like Mayor Ducey or anybody like that, but I just think that this is a prime example of uh, what, what is wrong when our government sees, to, sees fit to just over-regulate. Because there comes a time when common sense has to you know, it's like you, 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 you don't give credit, people, people credit for having common sense. If you, before you rent your unit to someone, you need to find out who that person is, what type of person that person is, and, you know, if they're a sex offender or whatever. And I just uh, feel that this is just uh, an issue that uh, is a waste of time. You could be spending time 
more <coughs> on other issues. And one final question, uh, thing here, I attend Tom's River, I mean, Ocean County Freeholder Meetings, and I wanted to know why the township has not gone on the issue of dredging. Why hasn't the township approached the, approached the county freeholders for help with funding for dredging or other issues in town? Because when I spoke at, when I, I was at a freeholder meeting, the freeholder, uh, freeholders were discussing their budget surplus, which was a, a large amount of money. And I said, as because the township, uh, the Ducey administration received criticism for having a large surplus, and I asked the freeholders why they have such a large surplus, even larger than brick, and they said it's because they give aid to townships in case like things like Hurricane Sandy. So has the township gone to the freeholders and asked them if they have any funding available to help the citizens in town with dredging or any other issue regarding Hurricane Sandy relief uh, issues because uh, from what the freeholder director, I forgot, uh, chairman, I forgot who it was, it might have been Bartlett, I can't remember, it's been a while since I've been there. He says that they do give uh, provide aid when requested by towns, and I think that this is something that we should at least look into, you should at least look into. And I don't know, uh, has, has have we done that? Have we done gone to the freeholders or even the state for help? Uh, Gone to the state many, many, many times uh, because they were the ones that initially uh, committed to dredging all of the um, small lagoons that service only a few homes and the larger lagoons after Sandy. They were going to do them all. They were going to come in and they were going to take care of this problem and then ran out of money but never told anybody yeah. we're not going to come back. So people waited very patiently and eagerly and didn't notify the township either. So we were also waiting. Um, and <coughs> When it comes to the state, they say yeah. that these waterways are the township's responsibility, but they are the regulatory agency for the waterways. So when we come up with a project, we have to go through significant hoops and expense to get them to approve the work that we do. So uh, it's very difficult for us. Okay, what well is the state? You know, but what about the regard. county? So we have lobbied the state uh, uh, vehemently, yeah. like I said earlier. Okay, to yeah, take I, I understand that. It's but the no, state. we haven't asked the county because the county's first response would likely be that's you or that's the state. Well, I'm see, sure that's they not have what I was at a freeholder meeting. I had, I had something different told to me about the freeholders. They say because when people challenge them, I challenge them. I ask them, hey, how come the brick, brick, uh, brick township is being criticized for the budget surplus, but you have like a, I think it was. I forgot how much it was, 20 million, 18 million, something like that. I, speaking off the top of my head. And it says because uh, the budget surplus is there in case of an emergency, like because they provide aid to towns if they need it, like Hurricane Sandy. I'm happy so to ask. Have, have you Thank has you for the suggestion. I'm happy to ask. Okay, so you haven't actually gone yet. I haven't yet. asked, but Okay, I that might be some suggestion. good news for the public then. Thank you. You're welcome. don't have eyes in the back of my head, regardless of what I might have told my children. Mancall, 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. Backtracking with what Mr. Foster said, his comments and many other people's comments are the exact reason why I have been saying for years we need to have council comments and administration before public comments. Many of the things that were said, the people would have heard and know. And the council comments, when they do make them, should be the things about your lobbying. I never heard that. You have that problem about the dredging. I never heard that. And I haven't heard anything about what's happening with the pedestrian and bicycle path, which brings me to the fact I don't think anybody can see. I've never brought up that it's very dangerous driving here, that pedestrians don't have a place to walk, and that under the... Uh, Garden State underpass right here is ridiculous. You did, you, in conjunction with work with the county, the state, uh, and the state includes the T Turnpike Authority, and you left a whole bunch where there's a curb and it's grass and nobody can really walk there, and today I came out from under there, and as you know, if I'm coming from down at Lane's Mill, and Greenbrier too, I have to make the stupid turn. And as I went to go into the lane for the turn, and I stopped at the light, because I had to go to the second part of it, not the first, here is a young man. He looked like a teenager. 
walking. And of course, he was following the rules of the road, which should an awful lot of bicyclists don't. He's walking, therefore, he's walking towards traffic, not, against, not with it. He's walking against. Bicyclists are supposed to ride with the traffic. That is part of the motor vehicle or moving vehicles, they call them now, law. And too many bicyclists ride against it. They don't know it. They don't get educated on it. And that's a big problem. Well, I came very close to clipping that kid or doing more than clipping. And the car behind me was an SUV. I looked in the rear view mirror. That car, after I moved to make my U-turn, or whatever you call it, left turn, the car went all the way back near the vocational school. So that's my first problem. Uh, and I have said, I all four awards to Pamela Cooper and others, teachers, students, do it at the school. There is an article that's going around about how much aid is going to be cut to the school. You don't discuss that here. You don't discuss their budget. You don't discuss hiring a principal. You act like the school has nothing to do with our township, which is wrong. So I therefore believe that you will certainly, especially in view of the fact that I believe that he may be a parishioner, that next meeting you will make arrangements and start right away to honor Monsignor Brady, who has been here for 20 years. He has done tremendous things, not just for the church, but to aid this township. He has a school of at least 500 students who would be a drain on the school system in view of this economic crisis. Their parents pay the taxes and then have to pay tuition, and it's not an easy tuition. And they, you should have him and the principal of the school, Carol Bathman, but mostly. They have a media center that would rival anything in the most prestigious technical school available. And it's now got the name of Monsignor Brady Media Center. I went to see it when they first did it. He has put additions on. And as he said Sunday at the mass that we had for his retirement, he never asked us for money. Uh, many priests in the Catholic Church do. Cardinal Dolan always makes jokes about, uh, did they take a st second collection? He has not ever asked us to give money for all he's been doing, and he has done phenomenal things. In addition, he, has, he is from Ireland, from County Cavan, which is not where I am, but my good friend, Jerry, who kept me laughing at work every day. He was from Cavan, and Monsignor had a friend in Ireland that got involved in Ethiopia with a place called Vida. I think that's how you say it. And he has gone ever since that gentleman came, talked to us. We've donated money, and it was not an appropriation. It was if you can help us. And every year he gives us an update. And this past year, if you saw what these people who live in abject poverty have done, where they had a walk to get the water and carry it on their shoulders. The women would do this, and they walked miles, and it was in mountainous areas. I'd like you to ask them for the video of what they did. They have put in solar so that the homes, although no electricity, have solar to provide heat when it's very cold, to provide cooking things, it is a phenomenal uh, city, in effect, but he doesn't call it that. It gets the video, show it on our television about what he did, and then tell me that you don't deserve honoring this man for everything he has done for this town. Oh, the food pantry. Every week, I forget how many he said, come to that food pantry. They have the... Um, St. Vincent de Paul, and I know them from my Brooklyn days for years, and they do phenomenal things in all parishes. So I'll leave you uh, the Sunday Bulletin, and uh, I'll tell you there's a lot more that I have, but the one thing I will mention, 
is that I have here uh, the minutes from a couple of the meetings of the Commission for Individuals with Disabilities. I've mentioned many times that we have, I'm the Vice President, and I noted the one, this, uh, this one, but it's from last year, uh, Janine Namira is the president. She's a young lady. She got herself not only uh, a degree, but she was a master in social services. And she can tell you the horrors, not, not so much what she suffered during uh, Sandy, but the next door neighbor on what she, her mother and father, did for that person and nobody thinks about. She's in an electric wheelchair, people that got taken out of their homes in wheelchairs, but they had no power. They were taken out on stretches with no wheelchair to go with them, no power, no generators around. I know one that went to Burlington uh, that was uh, not physically disabled, but she had mental problems, and the family all wound up out in Burlington. Um, Colleen, Mo Colleen Odell Muller, she was with the ADA, and she's one of the people that was so involved in getting the Voter for Disabilities Rights Act passed in this state. She now is not able to attend the meetings. She was one of the com commissioners. But uh, she is in straits now. She's an MS sufferer, has been featured in many ADA magazines and stories. She was a brick resident, or still is, I guess. Uh, Janina's, I am, and I may have noted somebody else. Don't do anything about the emergency management without talking to Janine, and I did last Friday, uh, a week ago Friday, get her permission to mention that she is willing. However, you have no idea what it's like for people that are in her condition and in a wheelchair and trying to get out. You can't get out for an early morning meeting and she can't get out for a nighttime meeting. So get in touch with her. I will give you the uh, minutes. I thought I had two if I find it, but I have at least this that mentions who we are. and. There's so much more, but of course, I know you don't want to hear my voice anymore. But if I would have hit that young man with the bicycle, you'd have been hearing pr plenty. Thank God. And the car behind me saw what I did, so he didn't hit him I, or she didn't hit him either. Can you give that information, Ms. Paul, Absolutely. to Chairman Hartman? To Next, Mr. Sluka. Good evening. I'm going to read my letter I wrote on June 5th to the mayor and council president and the rest of the council people. So, it has been over five, year, five and a half years since the New Jersey Turnpike Authority began the destruction of the area of the Garden State Parkway between mileposts 95 and 89 going southbound. Uh, this negatively impacted the lives of thousands of Brick, Howell, and Lakewood residents with the destruction and creation of many of the exits, they the t Turnpike Authority lined their pockets, their power broker friends, and some politicos as well. The new existing ramps and the roadway expansion of the Garden State Parkway is a financial windfall for the insiders and bureaucrats that run big government bureaucracies like the NJTA. The NJTA said that they did not expand the parkway and move the roadway closer to the home in Evergreen Woods but actually that's semantics used in a manner to distort the true meaning of roadway expansion and existing lanes. A lane that begins north of southbound mile marker 103 and ends in the last half mile as a lane that exits into exit number 91. Toll boots cannot truly be called an exiting ramp by any normal honest definition. It's 13 miles long that, road, that lane. If they were being honest, they would have done the right thing five years ago. Obviously, they're not honest. What is needed in Garden State Parkway area adjacent to Evergreen Woods, Primrose Gardens, Greenbrier, Birchwood Park, Sutton Villages, other areas of Brick Township is increased forestation as well as a 14-foot noise pollution and, and safety wall. 
the problem was caused by these illegal actions of the commissioners of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. And over the past years, it has been, it has been brought to the attention of the NJTA, the State House, the County Government, and the Council here in Brick that these illegal actions of the NJTA on the Garden State Parkway has caused harm to our residents. Many study, studies brought before the Council and the NJTA have shown how the toxins associated with Garden State Parkway traffic has called asthma, caused asthma in children, chronic lung ailments, including COPD, illnesses, including autism, pregnant women, and early deaths to our seniors, but nothing to date has impacted the thoughts of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. The one benefit I've received over the last 65 ma months myself from all this is that I spoke before the council, is that I met so many people on the outside, uh, that I, some many I didn't know before and some I have maybe have not spoken to in years. These new and former associations were created by the inactions of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority because over the period, about 100 people or so have stopped to talk to me about the problems since they saw me on TV about the New Jersey Turnpike Commission. Many have stated that it would never stand up, they would never stand up before the council, speak up against government action. All but a few said they wish me well and can't believe I have the stamina to continually show the council the problems associated with this destruction. Even today, which was five days ago, I was again stopped by two different people and told they watched me on TV and said they are happy to go before the council, they, they're happy I go before the council because they would have given up a long time ago. Uh, I told them that's what governments do and bureaucracies do. They drag things out, ignore problems, and just hope you go away. It is well-used technique that works more often than not, and in reality, all they try to do then is to appease you. Uh, the NJTA tried to do that a few years ago with a small group of trees planted in Evergreen Woods, uh, which really did nothing for the residents. Often people say the people in government will never stand up and fight with you because they say they are volunteers, not to mention health or other compensations. But in reality, some of this is true because remember the first council that existed. During the initial destruction, they said the N if the NJTA did not do the right thing, they would stand here with the people and once they're out of office, obviously look around, they disappeared. I always mention that our local government tries to help but I usually get the feedback that they would rather talk about the meals in some restaurant or attending a play or marching in a parade than they would stand up and really s truly speak out for the people and that they would never take legal action against big government and big bureaucracies. A wall and increased forestation is the minimum that is needed, but the thousands impacted citizens can't do without the more influ influential people here would just sit instead of just sitting back and smiling, and they should take action. Thank you for your time, and I don't know if I mentioned John Sluka, 950 at Sylvia Court. Anybody else tonight? Seeing none, close public. Mrs. Bergen. No, thank you. Mayor. Sure, thank you. Um, so, been busy with school activities. Um, there's a lot going on at the end of the year. Uh, there's D.A.R.E. graduations, Herbertsville Road, um, Her Herbertsville Road, Herbertsville School, uh, St. Dominic's, Lanes Mill, and Drum Point have all held their D.A.R.E. graduations. The D.A.R.E. program here in town is a great thing. It's, uh, it's a program that's in all of our schools uh, here for fifth grade students, and it te teaches them basically, uh, it gives them a lot of information. They ask a lot of questions. Um, uh, it focuses on drug prevention, smoking prevention, not drinking alcohol uh, until you're old enough. Uh, but then uh, this year, the, the newest thing that came out um, from all the kids' questions was all about uh, vaping and juuling. Um, so they had, the kids had a lot of questions. And these are fifth graders that are asking about what it is and uh, what these different flavors mean and all these different things. So it shows you um, this is what fifth graders are, are thinking about. Um, and it gives them a lot of opportunity to get information. Um, they get to see what different things look like. They get to wear drunk goggles um, to understand why um, driving and uh, you know, just being intoxicated, uh, what that can do to your um, faculties. Um, so it's a great program. I'm, I'm happy that our um, police officers uh, dis, uh, back it up and the chief uh, supports having his officers in our schools every single day um, to do this program. Uh, also, we had a scholarship breakfast. Um, 
with the Ocean County Superintendents on May 24th, and there was three BRIC students who were awarded monies from the Ocean County Mayor's Association, which is great. Um, congratulations to all of you. The 24th, there was the BRIC Township High School Military Ceremony, which recognized veterans and students uh, going into the armed services. Uh, really special ceremony. Uh, it was the first time I ever went to it. The, um, uh, the staff that put this together, is re it's really great. They have the kids, uh, there was eight of them. Uh, they're going into the different branches of the military and uh, the school was there to support those eight kids as they uh, sacrifice uh, you know, their time and uh, to go into the military and to uh, defend our country for the next uh, few years. Uh, we also had the Brick Memorial High School Science Fair, which is unbelievable. It's every year I tell you, you can't miss it. Um, and you shouldn't miss it. And it was standing room only again this year. The job they do, uh, the students with all the different science experiments. Um, so my son graduated from kindergarten uh, last Wednesday from St. Dominic's and he uh, had his first day off last Thursday and all he did the entire day was science experiments. He was home with my wife and they got cornstarch and food coloring and all sorts of things. Um, and that comes from that science fair where he was two nights before that. Um, so it really has an impact on a six-year-old. Imagine what it's doing for the kids in that school. And so great job by Mrs. DeBruin and everybody who puts that together and allows it to happen. Um, the Pavilion, they did a great Memorial Day event. Um, they recognize our resident, Daniel Passarella. He's a World War II veteran. Um, and he uh, you know, uh, was also uh, involved with, with, with D-Day and uh, had landed. Uh, in France, and uh, he's uh, just another great veteran uh, that we honored that day at the pavilion. Um, we had the Memorial Day Parade, which was mo Monday, May 28th, and it was the highest attended Memorial Day Parade that I've seen. I mean, when I turned, we turned the corner off of uh, 70 onto Chambers Bridge. It was amazing that the people were, you know, three, four deep at that point, which was uh, more people than we've seen in the last year, couple years. A couple of years has been canceled, but even before that. I'm glad to see so many people came out and then the ceremony here put together by the VFW, uh, also with our American Legion and uh, um, Gold Star Moms and everything else, it's a very touching ceremony. Uh, the Mayor's Cup, Mayor's Trophy game for Little League happened and Brick American uh, defeated Brick uh, Little League. That's the uh, first time in a long time that there's back-to-back -back winners, back-to-back um, -year, -back -year win yearly winners. Um, and then lastly, I was, had the opportunity to speak at Rowan University. They invited me to the um, South New Jersey Development Council to speak, which I did on June 8th, uh, about our storefront revitalization program and the fact that we're um, attracting different types of businesses to town. Not that, you know, obviously the box stores are going out of business, but we're getting um, the sports dome with the fields. We're getting the, um, the Jersey Shore paint parties and that where your people are going into paint. Uh, we're getting the Gravity Vault, which is rock climbing, and all those different um, different types of entertainment options rather than stores. And that's, uh, that's what they asked me to speak about because we've been successful in getting those different types of businesses here. Um, and uh, I just want to remind, remind everybody, so Tuesday is our eighth grade graduations. Wednesday is our high school graduations, which means everybody's out for summer. So please use caution when driving, especially in our neighborhoods. We all know we don't have the most pedestrian-friendly place here in Brick Township. And now the kids are going to be out there, so please, everybody, be careful. Thank you. Mr. Keneally? Nothing this evening, thank you. Madam Clerk? Nothing, thank you. Ms. Hartman? Councilwoman Zafnik? Thank you, Council President. Um, I would like to congratulate Pam Cooper on being named Teacher of the Year. Um, during her bio, it was mentioned that she is the Lead and Seed Advisor at Lake Riviera. Lead and Seed is a program that's actually um, it's hosted by um, RWJ Barnabas Institute for Prevention and Recovery, for whom I now work, um, but it's also supported financially through the um, uh, BMAC grant, and um, it um, and the uh, it and so what it does is it actually trains the students um, in prevention science and leadership skills and presentation skills, so that they can carry out projects in their home schools and in their communities to educate their peers. Um, on the dangers of alcohol and um, other substance use. It also, um, in addition to the, uh, working with the advisors, the, our um, pol community policing officers, the DARE officers, go into the schools and work with these kids. So it continues that relationship that they developed in the fifth grade with the DARE officers. It continues on through their middle school years. Um, they've done some uh, wonderful projects, and as a matter of fact, 
uh, Councilman Fosman put me in touch with uh, uh, two students at Lake Riviera in the Lead and Seed program that expressed interest in coming in at, into a council meeting and doing a presentation on uh, vaping and jeweling with the mayor had talked about because it is a huge concern uh, among our students. So I'm waiting to hear back from them so we can uh, schedule that a brief presentation at a council meeting. Um, so again, congratulations to Pam Cooper. And then I just have one announcement from the Garden Club. They asked me to announce that their annual Secret Gardens of Brick Tour and Tea will be held on Tuesday, July 10th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be seven uh, ho brick ho homes on the tour, um, an opportunity to enjoy refreshments, music, plant sale, vendors, a gift <coughs> raffle, and an arts display at the Cultural Arts Center. The tickets are $15 in advance or $20 the day of the tour can be purchased at Added Touch Florist, Berry Fresh Farms, Brick Flower Mart, uh, Flower Bar on Chambers Bridge Road, Purple Iris Flower Shop in Point Pleasant. And for more information, call 732-920-8231. This is the Garden Club's um, pretty much their only major fundraiser of the year. And the monies that they raise from the Secret Gardens Tour and Tea go right back into the things that they do to beautify the township. So um, I think all of us have had an opportunity of one year or another to participate. I would highly encourage it. It's a wonderful day. And that's all I have this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Halloran. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I would also like to congratulate um, Pamela Cooper for uh, the award of Teacher of the Year. Uh, and I also want to remind you that Thursday, the June 14th, is Flag Day. So I hope you all uh, display your flags prominently. Uh, and I am the only one, or the first one on the council to say Happy Father's Day. Aww. Everybody else forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I knew you weren't going to remember. I have written down. So Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Enjoy your day. That's it. Council Vice President Creek. I have nothing. Councilman Mumala. I would like to say congratulations to Pamela Cooper for Teacher of the Year. And all you uh, bridge, uh, mystery bridge sufferers, the county's given us an update. The bridge will be closed on the 13th and the 14th, which is tomorrow and Thursday. I'm not sure if people are going to be able to see this in time. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. because we're actually doing work on making the lane change so that we'll be driving over the new bridge. And in about a week's time, they'll be closing the other side. They're going to do the northbound side first, putting up a wall, building the uh, ramp to the bridge, and then they're going to do the south side and then do the wall <coughs> ramp and hopefully open that up. But it'll still be only one direction heading north. But hopefully that stands if we can get a little more progress on there and get the damn thing open because I get tired of driving around the world to get somewhere. Uh, also, I'd like to just wish every father out there happy Father's Day. Thank you. Councilman Fosman. Um, yes, I'd like to talk about the ordinance on the playground real quick. I know it was passed. So that means 20 days from now, on July 2nd, this will take effect. These signs that went up there should be covered until July 2nd. This is not a police state. This should be done. You should, we shouldn't intimidate the people that are going there to play at a playground. <coughs> it's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, there's 70 parking places there, four handicapped, one reserved for vets, and 65 regular spaces. I don't see why this is going to be for two and a half months. We spent a lot of money on this ordinance, and it's just ridiculous. It's the places aren't packed. They're, 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 there's empty places there. I just don't understand it. We built parks to have kids play in, not to restrict them from playing. And the uh, other ordinance, I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, it was tabled, and uh, you know, it's funny. We have a blue heart program here in town. People are addicted to heroin. We send them out to get help. They can't even come back here and rent a place. <laughs> the place that they lived. This is sad, you know. This is the kind of, this is the kind of, uh, of, of policing that we're doing. This is ridiculous. You know, that's, that's what's happening here. This, this has got to stop. Thank you. Council? I would just like to take full responsibility for those signs being installed in error at my direction, and I will take care of having them covered, and it is completely and totally my responsibility. Councilwoman Pontereau. Thank you. So our neighborhood watch program is still going strong. Um, yesterday evening, there was a meeting at 
the Lions Head South Clubhouse. It's not too late if you're from Lions Head South and still want to be a part of Neighborhood Watch. Please contact the town. They'll make sure that you get a hold of the right people so that you are included. The next meeting is going to be at Eagle Point at Eagle Point Beach on Tall Timber. So again, that would be 11 o'clock a.m. on the 16th of June at Eagle Point Beach on Tall Timber. Uh, the next Neighborhood Watch meeting after that is at 7 p.m. on the 26th of June on Chambers Bridge, <coughs> 175 Chambers Bridge Road in the community room, and that's for the Chambers Bridge uh, neighborhood. And we're still making our way slowly but surely throughout the neighborhoods of Brick. Uh, next, I just wanted to address there was a statement made in the public comment section by Nan Cole about getting rid of the Students of the Month uh, presentations. That obviously, that, that issue, even though it wasn't discussed after that, <coughs> in that meeting, um, I'm sure that everyone knows the meetings are broadcast on television um, and my son, who has the privilege of being very familiar with Ms. Call, um, he knows her from various public events in town and we're members of the same church. Uh, he saw Ms. Call's comments and he wanted to write her a letter. So I'm going to go ahead and read the letter from my son who's in fifth grade at St. Dominic's. To my friend, Miss Nan. I think that it is important for Brick to give awards to the students each month who get the best grades and want the kids to keep getting the awards. I know that if I try hard enough when I am bigger that I could get good grades and the town will be proud of me like the high school kids. I would like an award someday, so please do not take it away or I will not get one. Your friend, Antonio Giuseppe Pontorero, and he also made you a paper airplane, which he states they made a paper airplane. Even though it's scribbled on, it flies very good, and he asked you if you have any prayers to send to your late husband that they might get quicker to heaven this way. Um, this letter, I think, speaks volumes about not just what my, my son thinks, but that kids are looking at other students getting these awards and thinking, maybe that could be me. Just the fact that they're understanding that the town's putting an emphasis on good grades and there might be you know, a recognition for that. If it touches even one child and makes them work a little bit harder on something good, on something that we value, then there is a true value in continuing that program. So I thought, you know, I wasn't going to address it directly um, because I didn't think that it, it necessarily would go anywhere, but when my son did this, and he did it on my own, he was at my office, and he asked me only about his paragraph, like where he makes the paragraph, and otherwise he did it on his own, so I'm going to give it to you when we leave along with the airplane for Patrick, for you to sign. Um, but to me, um, it's one of the most important things that I've ever obtained during my time on council, and it's to know that someone is watching who may be impacted in their future by what we do as a community and as a town. So even though he, you know, he's young, it means something, it means something to me. With that, have a happy and blessed Father's Day. Ms. Call, we are in the council comments. You have next um, meeting. No, Ms. Call. No. Thank you.
He's attending St. Dominic's. 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 Miss Call, please refrain from speaking. I, you are not recognized at this moment. Thank you, Councilwoman Ponterero. That was very sweet of Antonio. And for my council comments this evening, I have an update on Bayan Brick. The Spanish Olive on Maniloking Road has joined with a 7.5% rebate on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sundays, along with Dofella's Pizza, which is on Route 70 in the ShopRite Plaza. They, were, they are actually where the Pizzo Pizza is, or was, uh, with a 10% rebate. I just would like to remind everybody, Senior Services is hosting a Father's Day dance this Friday at 1 p.m. And with that, I would like to just wish all the fathers out there a very happy Father's Day. The next scheduled council meeting is on Tuesday, June 26th at 7 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. What? Aye, 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 aye.